Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnke and as always I'm here with Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart. Hello David, you beautiful son of a bitch. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Whoa, Too I far? Felt, no, that felt great. Ah. Felt great over here as well. Mm. What a beautiful 2024 energy. I know we're a month in, but I'm still getting used to this new year. Yeah, yeah, Happy New Year, by the way. It takes time. <laughs> Happy New Year, yeah, I think it's still allowed. Okay, great. Just, Just. But cut it the fuck out by next week. Okay. Yeah, this is the last time you'll be saying that. This is the last that. time you'll be saying that. I think- the ne- dip- Next week you start Happy Easter. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Hot cross buns. Yes. Already in the shops. Crazy. Oh, I, I love believe it. it. I think it's fantastic. Anyway, uh, nice to be here. Oh, it's so nice to be here. I love it. Uh, full disclosure, it's still 2023. No, <laughs> no, no, shush, no, okay. don't they ruin the know. illusion. I, they didn't know. That was seamless. That all that bit about discussing the date four weeks in. Yeah. They don't know Perfect. that we're still on holidays and well, not thinking about this podcast at all. It's all they automated. Don't know that. You call the helpline, you're speaking to a robot. Yeah, it's we're not, not even us. there. It's not us at the moment. It normally is, but not right now. Yeah. We're on holidays. Yeah, 1 800 do go on. Yeah. Okay. We're busy. I'm on a beach. Leave me alone. Well, that's okay. AJ, our editor, will just chop this out. Mm. Okay, so no worries. Hey, Jess. Yeah. So we'll just come straight into this bit. Jess, how does this show work for new listeners? I'm so glad you asked, Matthew, my good friend. <laughs> how this show works Cut is- Cut that bit. It was not believable. <laughs> one of the three of us goes away, researches a topic usually suggested to us by the wonderful listeners and often voted on by the listeners. They uh, they research it. They make they write a little story about it. They mm. bring it to the other two who listen politely, who never interrupt and never go on dog shit rips <laughs> and never criticise anything anybody ever does. And we always get onto the topic with a question. And just for new listeners, yeah, we're tedious for the first two or three listens. Then you get used to us. We get used to us you, and, it, and maybe even come to like you us. You know, like you watch the first step of the pilot episode of The Office and you're like, eh. Mm. But, you know, a couple of seasons in, you're like, I would die for Pam yes. or whatever. Oh, I yeah. fucking know. I've never well, watched it. It's just it. going to take you a few years of episodes. Yeah. It's it like- took me three seasons to get into Shit's Creek. Just commit to it. Just get, just give it a crack. We're basically like your, your first cigarette. You're coughing your lungs up. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. Just keep going. Your first sip of beer, you're like, Whoa. Soon you will be hooked and addicted. Yes. yes. Please. Okay. Join us. So, we always <laughs> drink start up. with a question. Yeah. I'm doing the report this week. It was voted on by the Sydney Schoenberg level and above. Mm-hmm. Bit of a landslide. Uh, my question, I don't know, because we do keep score on the questions. This one, I don't think we can do that. Anyway, here's my question. I wrote this report deep into the night last night. Okay. And I'm, it's, I'm looking at it now going, oh, that's the question I wrote. Sure. Here's my question. What is the worst crime your pet has ever committed? <laughs> Pissing inside. Pissing inside for Jess. So, Jess gets a point there. Dave? Oh, what about uh, diarrhea explosion inside? Oh, my God. Okay. I think you both, you split the points this yeah. week. Uh, this week's episode is about animals on trial. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a great 4am topic. I am so on board with animals this. Animals on trial. Are you, are you aware that this was a, a weird thing from history where animals literally well, went obvi- on trial? Obviously, we've had slight experience when we visited- the seaside village of Hartley Pool. I'm going to tell Kingdom. that story, which you we all wasn't... remember so well. I was going to. I wasn't sure if you guys would remember that. So that's uh, Jess. You'll get a little refresher call. That's one of my go-to stories. Whenever I'm doing uh, audience warm-up on the project, and we get people in from overseas, often Britain, they come in there, and if, I, if they say anywhere at Newcastle or slightly south of there, I'm like, ah. Oh, I drove through Newcastle on the way to Hartlepool. Have you heard about this? Heard about this? Seen this? Heard about this? And then I'm telling all the other, other the rest of the crowd. It's one of my go-to stories about yeah, how weird nice. these people. Are. And it always does really well. Yeah, they love it. They, I don't actually, I don't want to give it away because Matt's about to tell it, but they did something, and it's outrageous. Yeah. And uh, you're going to get to uh, have those thoughts that you have about English people about Western Europe in general. Fantastic. You, so, oh, anyone from Portugal in tonight? Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, this. Week's episode was suggested by Blake Wild from Yuma, Arizona. Mm. Um, sounds a bit like an animal's name, to be honest. Blake Wild, like an animal pretending to be a human. Uh, I'm a uh, uh, Blake uh, Wild. <laughs> it's also very close to George Costanza's stripper name, Buck Wild. <laughs> Blake Wild. Oh, it's like that's good. So, mm. what, who are you? A uh, wild animal. I mean, uh, uh, wild. Um, uh, Bla- Blake, Blake Wild. wild. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think got, got, over, I, got over that. <laughs> I nailed it. I'm still talking out loud, aren't I? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I've said too much. I claw their eyes up. I'm a raccoon. <laughs> this topic, I put up what I thought was a sure thing winner. Uh, as a serial killer episode oh. uh, about this uh, copycat killer of um, 
or or otherwise of the Zodiac Killer. Oh, wow. And it was third out of three. Wow. Yeah, so I was really surprised. So, um, is this like one of your like filler ones? You're like, they'll never pick this. So. No, it wasn't filler. I only ever put up Killer, but I just thought, I'm like, this is the kind of episode- I put up I- all filler. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, filler after filler. That's, like, That's why I consistently lose best <laughs> report giver. History. I'm just doing fillers. <laughs> History of chairs. Yeah. And then, uh, people were like, oh, it's my legs tired. I want to sit down. So they were like, what can I sit on? And uh, chairs were made. That's not true. <laughs> Dave's the one who does those bullshit episodes. History of the saxophone. <laughs> I'm right. yawning already. Okay, history of the dictionary. <laughs> Settle down. And history of the saxophone one. Best, That's best pretty episode. funny. You came to my defence and I attacked you. <laughs> <laughs> the dictionary is the most popular vote for all, yeah, all of last year. Great. And the saxophone episode one episode of the year that year. Yeah, I've actually been up. toying with doing a history of the lemon. Oh, I like it. And I'd- how it's spread around the world. Anyway, a bit of fun there. Lemon spread. A little sizzle. Uh, so... Uh, there is actually, this is surprising me, I thought I found a one-off case, but it turns out there's quite a rich history of animals being put on trial <laughs> for crimes they supposedly committed. It seems pretty wild now, but in medieval and early modern Europe, and as it turns out in multiple other places, but I'm going to be mainly uh, featuring stories from these places, mm-hmm. there are many documented examples of animals being accused and tried for criminal offences. <laughs> This phenomenon came about due to a combination of religious beliefs, superstition, and it's fair to say, a lack of a deeper understanding of the natural world. <laughs> <laughs> there are two main kinds of trials, ecclesiastical, which is sort of basically religious tribunals, and mm. secular, uh, non-religious <laughs> tribunals. Uh, as James Brigden uh, writes for history.co.uk, while domesticated animals tended to be tried in secular courts, Vermin, such as rodents and insects, were tried in ecclesiastical courts. This is because the former were considered to be under human control, oh. while the latter, supernatural intervention was needed to bring them to justice. Sure. If you want to get a, you know, a, a vermin <laughs> yeah. under control. you got to call the priest. Yeah. <laughs> but you got a dog. That's You control that with yeah. your mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just use your mind. Fucking hell. Use your mind. Come on. This is on you. Uh, academic Jane Gergen, who I- uh, feature quite a bit uh, in this, uh, wrote an article uh, for one of the uh, law uh, journals called The Historical and Contemporary Prosecution and Punishment of Animals. Uh, she wrote, in spite of their non-traditional defendants, both the ecclesiastical and secular courts took these proceedings very seriously and strictly adhered to the legal customs and formal procedural rules that had been established for human criminal defendants. The community, at its own expense, provided the accused animals with defence counsel, and these lawyers raised complex legal arguments on behalf of the animal defendants. Like, they took it fully seriously. And there's arguments, I'll talk about a few, that were pretty successful, that were just like, they found the loopholes in the law, they were able to, just like they would to get off a, a human client, But they did that for- A lawyer would do that. Yeah. So, with the, the say, so, you know, a tortoise is accused yep. of- you know, biting the thread out of a man, and they're in jail. Does the lawyer go and have a little pep talk with him and say, "Look, Terry the tortoise. I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm going to need the truth to get you off, man. Yeah. Tell me, did you do it? You can L- tell me. Tell me, Terry. Come on, come Terry. on. A couple of slaps across the face. Come on, Terry. This is serious, Terry. Terry, if you are, if they want to put you in the stand, we can't stop them. I need to go through some questions. Be okay. <laughs> Terry, you can't stay silent forever. Ter- Terry, if you do this in front of the judge, you'll be in contempt. The Fifth Amendment isn't isn't a thing yet. <laughs> okay, Terry? In fact, the United States isn't a thing yet. Okay, Terry, I don't know why you keep talking about the United States. It's not real. Okay? <laughs> it's not real. Okay. You've made it up. Eyes up here, Terry. Terry, this is a genuine For thing God's we're sake. talking about oh my God, here. You're going to be hanged, Terry. Come back to the real oh, world, gonna Terry. Who's going to look after your wife, Tina? <laughs> oh, my God, Terry. Terry. Jeez, you're responsible for a family, Tez. Yeah, exactly. It's that like kind, that. that. Yeah, that kind happened. of thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to Gergen, which is just a fantastic name in itself. In criminal trials, animal defendants were sometimes detained in jail alongside human prisoners. <laughs> Evidence was weighed and judgment decreed as though the defendant were human. Finally, in the secular court, when the time came to carry out the punishment, usually lethal, youthfully lethal. Uh, the court procured the services of a, of a professional hangman who was paid in a like manner f- as for any other more traditional executions he performed. Oh, good luck hanging a snake. <laughs> They're all neck. <laughs> It'd be easy then. They're all neck. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they- if you hung it, they just sort of wriggle around and you go, shit. 
Oh, that's true. Yeah, they could sort of slither around. Slither around. around. Mm. Good luck hanging a rugby union player. They're so, no neck. No neck. Yeah, that's yeah. What, I think that's what you meant. What, what about a rugby union playing snake? Can't Holy happen. Shit. Exactly. There's nothing Can't in the happen. rule book, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this changes everything. Oh. We got a snake in a scrum half? Is that is that allowed? <laughs> Scrum half a position. Scrum half, yes. Well, well, well Parramatta are allowed eels out there. Why aren't we allowed a snake? <laughs> a loose head prop. <laughs> Man, they got great position names. Um, so, yeah, they were fully legit things. It's so wild to me to think about this. Mm. But, they, you know, they're s- serious in court, very straight-faced going- Wearing the full wigs. Everything's yeah. on. Um, full silk. Uh, according to Gergen, the earliest animal prosecution for which reliable documentation exists, there are stories about earlier ones, but um, like in the Bible and stuff, but these uh, reliable documentation was an ecclesiastical uh, proceeding dating back to the year 824 when a group of moles was excommunicated in the valley of Aosta in Italy. And excommunicated, I think I'll talk about it later, but that basically means that you're sort of like you're out of Christianity, can't go to heaven. <laughs> You're damned for forever. So these moles, it's like you're out. Wow. Good luck. Good luck. But you're not coming to mass, <laughs> and you're not going to heaven. So I hope you're happy with the d- damage you did to the farm. <laughs> and do they have to like take them out to the desert and drop them off somewhere, or is it fully like well, you you keep living there? That's whatever. But w- but you're not going to heaven. Yeah. Well, it de- it depends. Uh, sometimes they give them like a an ultimatum. You've got a certain amount of time to leave. <laughs> And in that, if you're still there, then excommunicated. Right. Wow. Is that when they started the fortress? Deep yeah. in the centre of the I earth? I think this I is where it all began. Yeah. 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 Why Fine. would they have before that? So Exactly. Turn your backs on us. We'll, we'll, we'll turn our backs and start digging. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, that's when they started mating with humans to make <laughs> mole people. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Maybe was that their biggest crime? Yeah. I think that was seen as, and I do touch They're on- They're not going to heaven. I touch on similar activities later. <laughs> oh, okay. Only briefly, but Yeah. Also seen as a no-no in the church. Real stickless. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this week I'm going to take you through some of these strange but true tales. Uh, in this first example, I'll tell you about a time in the 15th century when a sow and her six piglets were arrested for murder. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. I wanted to get enough bums for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> enough bums for all the piglets. <laughs> Each, each piglet deserves a bum. Yeah. Hey, you know. <laughs> in December. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> in December of 1457, the sow and six piglets were arrested in Savigny in France for murder. Together with their owner, they were arrested and put on trial. According to the court records, three lawyers were present, two for the prosecution and one for the pigs. Well, that's not fair. Oh, well, straight off the on. bat. Oh, come on. You There's know? seven fucking pigs yeah. here. Yeah. And you're expecting one lawyer to look after all? Oh. Wow. <laughs> is this, a, this is more like a kangaroo court. <laughs> uh, there's also the kangaroo is represented. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after many witnesses were called, based on their testimony, the judge ruled that while the human owner should have been watching his pigs, the animals were solely responsible for the murder, particularly the sow. According to Alexander Lee from the University of Warwick, uh, writing for History Today, after consulting with experts in local customary law, the judge solemnly sentenced her to death. The piglets were a different matter, though, since there was no direct evidence that they had participated in the mo- murder. <laughs> oh, my God. They had participated in the murder. The judge decided to let them off on the promise of good behavior. <laughs> piglets. Ra- raise your hoof. Yep. Pledge. Okay. Look at me in the eye. <laughs> No mucking about. Come on. I'm happy to I'm happy to hang you as well. Okay, huh? good behaviour. All right. Okay. Your word is your vow. That's hmm? pretty cute. That'll do, pig. <laughs> That'll do. It was right there and he had to take it. Uh, it's possible that the piglets' behaviour in the courtroom helped them uh, off to get off too. <laughs> they all sat very well. They look so cute. Yeah, so cute. They came in wearing gumboots. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Piglets in gumboots. My favourite. <laughs> it's so cute. The judge is like, I can't possibly oh, hang look these. At the little, where did you get the 
little girl Secretly moves. they're thinking, I'm going to tear the throat out of that judge <laughs> after this. <laughs> You're so cute. Let me off. <laughs> and it'll be the last mistake you make. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. It's you animal farm. You they're wearing, my mother. <laughs> wearing pants, walking mm. behind legs. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> But no, apparently, apparently their behaviour would be taken into consideration wow. in the courtroom. As uh, Philip Jamison, writing for Cambrian Law Review, said, In court, pigs would frequently act disrespectfully, <gasps> grunting, squealing, and trying to poke their noses through the bars of mm. the prisoner's box. Oh disgusting. My God, disgusting. How Dis- dare they be so disrespectful? <laughs> Don't they not? I mean, you, you're only hurting yourselves, guys. Let's think about this. You take your dog into a courtroom. What's he doing? Crying. Yes. Probably peeing. Yep. Sniffing. Yep. Eventually barking. Showing remorse. Licking. (laughs) (laughs) Begging for forgiveness. Now beg. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Your dog? Um, Jumping on everybody. Um, probably pissing because <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, he gets so excited to take a piss. Well. If there's, uh, if anybody has a soccer ball in the courtroom for whatever reason, <laughs> he's destroying that ball. Now realize that mm. they are basically treating the animals as if they were humans. Yeah. So you picture goose. Yeah. As a person, your French bulldog. Yes. It's a person. Yes. In court, doing those things. Mm. What's, I think it, what's it, the jury saying? Honest, well, I honestly think he'd be getting off because they'd be like, well, he's clearly insane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's pissed everywhere and he's biting a soccer ball. He's <laughs> walking around on all fours. Why are we here? This poor man needs help, they'll say. <laughs> but when it's a dog, it's kind of funny, you know? Please, get it some pants. Yeah. Oh, no, you'd have him in pants. Of course. He <laughs> always wears pants. Respect for the judge. Yeah, please. God. He'd We're not a nudist he'd, family. He'd piss his pants. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but he's got pants on. Uh <laughs> I don't think anybody's seen my Pro- dog's <laughs> genitals. <laughs> Probably, um, I feel like I'm laughing like Muttley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be a dog in a lot of trouble <laughs> in the criminal <laughs> court system. Um, so, uh, Jamison says, uh, goes on to say, mm. an animal that remained quiet during proceedings would, on the other hand, receive a certain measure of consideration for its demeanour. Okay, so you're like, Hey, this looks like a respectful pig. Yeah, that pig, <laughs> it walked in, it sat down, it's very cute. Its legs are kind of, the back legs are kind of to one side. <laughs> Your Honour. It's so cute. Do you see this pig? Yeah, this, this beautifully pig. Oh my behaved God. pig. This pig couldn't kill. Look at those eyes. <laughs> They're human-like eyes. <laughs> Pigs have human eyes, though, right? No, they've got pig eyes, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm getting confused with humans. They have human eyes. <laughs> yeah, human do. Human, human but, do. But some humans, do. some humans do have tiny little pig eyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. I want to know what pig eyes look like now. Excuse me. <laughs> I think if you- I think they have human eyes. Like, if you saw- Yeah. Yeah, if you just saw- I'm sure Alistair Trombley yeah. Bertram maybe had, like- That looks like Donald Trump. Yeah. Who's that, a, one, that, a top, human. that first one looks like Donald Trump's eye, and that's oh, a yeah. pig eye. So there you go. He's a human, we think. Anyway, very strange stuff. Yep. Um, and yeah, so that was a French case. So all those me saying uh, Your Honor would also would obviously be let on there and stuff like that. But <laughs> mm. um, and where was this case taking place again? Uh, seven years. Yes, <laughs> I think is how you say that. Uh huh. Very strange stuff. But apparently, this was not unique back then, particularly in France. Uh, The earliest recorded pig trial took place just outside Paris in 1266. Ooh, only 700 years before the Saints won their one and only VFL AFL Premiership. Over the following centuries, they happened over other parts of En Francais. Is that right? Am I saying that right? Yes, yep, correct. Uh, How do French people say France? They probably don't say France. We live in France. What do they say, Dave? Yeah, Francais. They say Francais. Oh, other parts of Francais and in other oh, parts of Europe, Europe, including Italia and uh, Deutschland. Uh, another trial. That's Germany. Italia. Is that what they say? Italia. Italia. How fucking dare you. Uh, I don't have to remind you my heritage, do I? I think you do. Well, Italia. One sixteenth Swiss Italian. That's a very. It's a regional accent I've put on there. <laughs> Up on the Swiss. That's right. Yes. Italia it's border. Very Swiss. What you, <laughs> how you sound? Yeah. 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 Ah, wee wee wee. Ah, see, see, see. Uh, another trial occurred in 1386 in what is known as the case of the pigs of Sens. Uh, which of, is it? Of Sens. Of Sens. Sens. That's a place in France. Sens. Place in Francais. Sens. 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 Dave, have a go. Sens. 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 I looked up a pronunciation video and the guy said when it's a verb, 
is son. You don't say the final S. Ah. And when it's a noun, you say son. Oh, right. But you didn't get the guys. Uh, welcome back. Thank you no, so much a for guy. joining us here today. I'm about to tell uh, you how yeah. to pronounce a word. And the word today yeah. is a German word. Here we go. Okay, the word is Berlin. <laughs> Berlin. Berlin. I love that guy. I love that I guy. Love that guy I too. love him so much. But also, like, how can I trust him? He speaks. He knows so many different languages. Oh, well, yeah, welcome back, back to today. today. <laughs> Berlin. Berlin. It is an Irish name. Irish <laughs> name. It's so Ian. good. He I could list. Just he needs to release a, a podcast of just talking for an hour yeah. and that perfect sleep podcast. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so this one was very similar to the Savigny case, uh, where a group of pigs, or uh, I think in France they call them poke. <laughs> Is that right? Uh, a group of poke or pigs were accused of murder. Only Ma- this- are they murdering people? Yes. Okay. Uh, Not other pigs. I don't. I don't get specific because it's usually pretty gross. Children. Um, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep. We will shut up. <laughs> I was going to say, how do they do it? But we don't want to know. Uh, this time, though. I'll tell you how I'd do it. Well, and it, it's clearly not the pig's fault, right? It's tell like, you how I'd murder a kid. Oh. Too far. Okay. Uh, today, <laughs> I'm going to tell you how I would murder a kid. <laughs> pigs. <laughs> pigs. I would use a pigs. <laughs> uh so, yeah, this time, apparently, and like with all these things, slightly different retellings of these multi-century old uh, court cases. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like all the pigs were found guilty. Following the verdict, or perhaps even to just enter co- court in the first place, it's believed the pigs were dressed in human clothes uh, before being hanged. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Before so- being hanged. Okay. Mm. But I also read Why? <laughs> another version that I read that they, they were dressed as humans to go to court. Right. That makes more sense. Have some yeah. respect. Yeah, yeah. Put on some pants to piss in. Um, but to hang them. Mm. Maybe like, you know when sometimes like a dog uh, will like lie on its back and it's just like dick out and you can be a bit like, all right, mate, yeah. put it away. Uh, maybe it's like that. They didn't want to hang them and just have, mm. like, these big oh, pig dicks yeah, hanging in yeah. the wind, you know? Yeah, because, you know, the mayor, famously, of Sens mm. at the time, tiny dick. And yeah. there's no problem with that. That's okay. No problem he, with he that. But he was quite- But he was- And that's- You know, it's okay yeah. to be sensitive, but he yeah. was- Maybe took it a bit to a yeah, weird yeah. place. He was angry at anybody for having yeah. a bigger dick than him, oh, including pigs. Check, look, check out this pork chop over yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just so to speak. <laughs> yeah. So to speak. So to speak. And I also read somewhere else that the younger pigs once again got off. Okay. Uh, For good behaviour. Yeah, yeah. If they promised. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, According to Gergen, following execution, the animals' bodies were usually buried either under the gallows or in the same location that had been set aside for burying the corpses of human criminals. They were rarely eaten as consuming the flesh of executed animals was considered taboo. Also, according to Edmund P. Evans and this guy- he, he wrote this book in 1906 called The Criminal Prosecution and Capital Punishment of Animals, which is kind of the book. It's the Bible of animal trials. And all these academics who write about it over previous decades, and I'm quoting from ones from like the 80s up to recent years, they, they're they all kind of working off this book. I think, you know, he really brought it brought it to light, the, the strange history. Wow. But anyway, according to him, Edmund Evans, great name. Uh, consuming the flesh of the executed animal would smack of anthropophagy or anthropophagy, uh, which I that's a term I didn't know. But it, it, uh, welcome back to the, uh, the word we are talking anthro- about is anthropophagy. Anthropophagy. <laughs> and that, uh, please uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's basically human cannibals. So cannibalism kind of means one species eating itself, but anthropophagy seems to be specifically humans eating humans so that oh. because the animals have been tried as humans oh. you couldn't you couldn't hang the pig and then eat and the then pig. eat it because it'd be like that's anthropophagy oh right How so strange. it's just wasteful and a lot of these times are these pigs being bred to eat anyway yeah exactly so they were going to be killed by humans but now they're being killed and no one is they're eating being, yeah they're yeah being they're killed just- as humans and no one's eating their flesh yeah that's, that's right weird. and like you're getting the like the grandma of the village to sew like a little outfit for the pig to put on 
Yeah. Nips that, a little pig jumper. But it's like I was saying before, very, you know, there's all these weird superstitions and, and old school religious beliefs and stuff. So, it's, it's all quite odd, especially looking back. I love to think about the things that in, you know, 800 years time, we're going to be like, people wear. <laughs> I'll continue to live. <laughs> 800 years time, with the three of us, we'll still be well, sitting well, here. Well, going, well, can, can you out. imagine those things we used to do then? <laughs> oh, Podcasting, be- so inhumane. <laughs> Can you believe the things people used to do? Die. They yeah. used to die. It's yeah, nice. weird. I I think ever since I decided to just keep living forever, yeah. I thought that was a weird thing they used to do. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, Edmund Evans, Edmund P. Evans said uh, that the animal after being uh, executed had in effect become the peer of man in blood guiltiness and in judicial punishment. So, yeah, it would basically be cannibalism to eat them. So, apparently, there are a lot of examples of perfectly good pigs and other farm animals um, being thrown away despite the fact that they could, you know, feed half the village or whatever, especially yeah. when it's like a group of pigs. Yeah. And some of these crimes, are, you know, it's just one pig did the murder, so, you know, the murder in inverted commas. Yeah. And then other pigs but ate. They Others got charged for standing by not doing anything. Get <laughs> fucked. <laughs> They're pigs. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they need to clean up yeah, their acts. Yeah, absolute fucking pigs. <laughs> were the pigs able to argue self-defense because they were being bred to be killed by the humans? I think it would really uh, be about how good the lawyer yeah, was. Yeah, okay, right. But yeah. I think that could have been a great argument to Yeah, make. why didn't anybody think of that? Yeah, they were about to kill her, so she killed them. There are similar arguments made um, for uh, that I might talk about later uh, about- yeah, I think there's one about weevils ruining a crop and the lawyer's like, God made uh, crops for all his creatures, including weevils. So, wh- how do they be sustained? Good one. And uh, I think that, that did pretty well for them. Anyway, wow. little sizzle for later on. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> so, these pigs are being thrown away, but this wasn't uh, just for classic meat animals. According to Gergen, in 864, it was said that if a person died after being stung by bees- the bees should be suffocated in their hive before they were able to produce any more honey. Otherwise, the entire contents of their hive would become demonically tainted and thus rendered unfit for use as food. So right. So, but they're saying kill all the bees and then let them make honey. Uh, Suffocate them all inside the hive. No, no. The, 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 you the can't murderers. eat that honey anyway. Oh, only that's the ca- murderers. Yeah, yeah. Well. But because they're going- No, I think bees can go to different- I don't know, but- I'm not a honey expert. Dave. Get rid of the hive, right. and then that if because if you let them live, and then they kept making honey, that that honey's fucked. It's yeah, tainted. I guess, I guess they hadn't figured out the bit uh, that we now know that bees die when they sting people. Yeah, so yeah. There's no yeah. chance of it ever being. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, they are kamikaze. Yeah, but yeah, that's um, it's uh, it's funny. Even bees. Even the bees. Even the bees. The is bees. it only is it only Not one, the bees. Not one the bees. gender of bee that sting? Yeah, is it the, just the soldiers or whatever? Yeah, because there's only one female in each hive, right? Oh, the okay. queen, is that right? Yeah, the classic. Rest- Men doing all the work. <laughs> <laughs> the female bees are the only ones that can sting. Okay. Oh, there you go. That's what I was trying to say. Well, I'm completely wrong there. Well, no, that's what I'm trying to say though. Women doing all the work. <laughs> Isn't <laughs> that typical? True. As a feminist, I just thought I should point that out. Yeah, so so pigs and bees, they're not the only ones on trial. All sorts of other animals as well, and I'm going to take you through a few other notable cases. Great. There were probably more, but they're only a certain amount, you know, the records have been kept through the years. Uh, rats and mice come up a lot. Obviously, these trials happened a long time ago, and some are better recorded the others than others. Uh, the rats of Ota... Uh, trial of 1508 seems to be a pretty well documented one, though. Paul Schiff Berman wrote about it in his piece titled Rats, Pigs and Statues on Trial, the creation of cultural <laughs> narratives in the prosecution of animals and inanimate objects. Wait, are we going to have a sequel episode about killer statues? Which well, you have already done one before in the past. <laughs> what? <laughs> about uh, uh, Blucifer. Oh, Blucifer, that's true. Yeah, no, I, I'm oh. not going to go. I love that I've got this up my sleeve. And if listeners want me to do another episode about- Killer statues, I'm down. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so he wrote this for the New York University Law Review in 1994, writing, In 1522, in the district of Ota uh, in France, an, a village was incensed to find that rats had been eat, uh, had eaten its barley crops. The townspeople took the matter to the ecclesiastical court, which duly investigated the crime, in inverted commas, 
and then delivered a summons to the rats, ordering them to stand trial. A court official went to the area of the countryside where the rats were believed to live and served a notice in a loud and solemn declaration. So a guy's gone out there to around the place and he's like, hear ye, hear ye, <laughs> or whatever the French version goes. I summon ye rats to court on this date at this time. Saying it with a straight face. It's such a fun image. It's so funny how seriously they took it. And, yeah, like, you, they don't understand you. But they're like, can you believe how disrespectful these rats are? None of them came out to even hear me speak. Yeah. I said, hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> for God's sake. This does not bode well for them. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah, it, it's- some people, I think some people have tried to suggest or assume that these were almost for entertainment or for show, but it seems like they were genuine and taken very seriously. That's fantastic. Uh, so, uh, Schiff Berman continues, This seemingly bizarre case then proceeded to an actual trial. The court appointed a young lawyer named Bartolome Chassigny uh, to defend the rats. And when the defendants failed to appear in court in response to the summons, Chassigny intervene to save his clients from a default judgment. So, this this is- These rats got lucky. They got a great lawyer. Oh, great. But he's standing there with the judge going, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Yes. They said they'd be they here. They said I was expecting them to be there. Yeah. Just give us five more minutes. Five more minutes, please. I but, swear they're on their way, Your yeah. Honor. But, you know, in a- he been, No, that's what that's what a bad lawyer would do. Oh. Basically conceding defeat. What He gets on the front foot. So, he argued- that there had not been proper service of process because, in fact, the salvation or ruin of all rats was at stake in this case. And so, all rats, and not just those in the village with the crops, deserve to be informed. He's like, Your Honour, you can't expect those rats to be here now. This this charge is basically against all rats. <laughs> and I, I think we need to get the word out to all of the rats. <laughs> but but for them to have a chance to defend themselves. So the town crier standing there going, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. I've, got to, I've got to go around the country. Hear ye, hear ye. God, I've said this 10,000 times. <laughs> yeah. So, and and they, the court agreed and, uh, you know, they adjourned and, and gave them more time. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Can you imagine being en français? <laughs> no, I'm embarrassed to be a human. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's are like, you kidding me? I think a lot of the French stories are well documented, but I think, you know, there are suggestions that these sort of things happened in different ways all around the world. I would love to know if you, if you are the judge, if they're taking it super seriously, or they're sitting there going, "This is such a waste of my yeah, time." Yeah, this I, is ridiculous. I went to uni for ages for this, <laughs> but a I've paycheck's got, a paycheck. Yeah. I've got an enormous hex debt, <laughs> and this is this is what I I really wanted to affect change, <laughs> and I'm here in a fucking rat trial. <laughs> And I've just given them more time. Yeah, I've said, fair enough, go tell all the rats. <laughs> what has happened to me? Uh, so it I'm goes glad on. my mum's dead. She'd be so ashamed <laughs> of me right now. She loved rats. She loved rats. <laughs> <laughs> and she hated the law. Uh, so he goes on, when the rats once more failed to appear at the next uh, appointed session, Chastling Yee, the, the, the rat lawyer- <laughs> urged that because the rats were disp- dispersed across the countryside, more time was needed for them to make the migration Incredible. to the courthouse. He's just going to say this every time. He's like, they've got tiny little legs. Oh, my God, they're on their way, though. How do you want them to get here? They can't ride a horse. Oh, my God, it's a big country. He got them another delay. Wow. Uh, then- All of the rats arrived. <laughs> In little suits. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to represent myself. <laughs> Justin is like, what the, what the frick? I call you all this time. Fine. Fine. And they, they cook it immediately. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> um, and we do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and fuck you. <laughs> Look, you're not getting the judge on side here, And then right? they shit in the courtroom and we you know that's a big no-no. Oh, no, no, and no. just leave fingers up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take, they, they unbutton their tiny little suit pants. <laughs> Take a shit on the Keep floor. Keep eye contact with the judge <laughs> while flipping you off while shitting on the floor. And then say, rats out. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck locking me up. <laughs> rats forever. <laughs> That's it. Get the rat noose. <laughs> one by one. <laughs> so, having been granted another delay, Chassignier pressed his case for the still absent rats. He argued that a summons implied the full protection of the law on the way their way to the courthouse. However, his clients, the rats, uh, though anxious to appear- 
feared they would be attacked by hostile cats and could not be expected to risk death in order to obey the summons. He's like, they would love to appear, but at what cost? Yeah. You know, the, the village's cats, and I, this is a story that's uh, written about in a bunch of different ways and places, and somewhere he said, so the villagers, you need to- you need to keep your cats inside. Everybody drown your this cats. This week. <laughs> <laughs> if we kill all the cats, my clients will be here. Yeah. That's all, that's all it will take. not until every cat is dead. <laughs> In one version of the story, they, they basically said that because the villagers said, we're not going to keep our cats inside all week, uh, they had to drop the charges. That was one version of it. <laughs> but it, there were, I've, I've read that they still got done and they got off in different ways. But Berman then writes, Although this story may sound like an absurd satire, the trial described above actually occurred. Wow. And apparently, um, yeah, depending on what you read, but apparently maybe Chazenet's work in the case got the rats off and helped build his reputation as a formidable lawyer. <laughs> uh, but, like, just the, the arguments alone, I think people were impressed. Like, it, it's just the fact that he's getting the, the case delayed. For these rats, yeah. it's like <laughs> this guy's good at law. Um, so yeah, he got a, got a reputation as a quite a formidable lawyer. And according to Gergen, he went on to become the first president of the Parlement de Provence, Provence, uh, a position corresponding to Chief Justice, uh, which is you know obviously a big deal. Uh, and also, a, it would became a significant contributor to the evolution of 16th century French legal thought. So he was a pretty big dog. Yeah, yeah and uh, like I say, I read that the case ended in different ways. In one on one article, which was more like a listicle, so I don't know how much I trust it, but they they said that the rats were sentenced to death by hanging, which I'm pretty sure isn't correct. <laughs> like, <laughs> how are they doing that? Just hanging a Firstly, bunch of rats. Firstly, they haven't rocked up. You're going out and getting, yeah, like they've said, little nooses but and stuff. You, I can't okay, say but think about it like this. If you hang a lot of rats by tiny little nooses, it would just look like some sort of weird decoration. Yeah, it would. <laughs> like, what, what's going on? Like fairy light Was it nearly thing. Halloween? <laughs> We're just hanging rats or? And that was the origin of, of um, Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> hang a rat for your sweetheart. Yeah, it's softened over the years now. Yeah. People just give cards chocolates and, and chocolates. Shit, but yeah. yeah, it used to be, used you to be ha- you hang a rat. rat. <laughs> I, I still hang a rat for Dave every year. <laughs> Thank Sounds you. like a euphemism for going to the John. <laughs> I hang a rat. I'm I go hang, hang a rat. rat. <laughs> a really big rat. <laughs> oh, that's no good. I apologise for Sorry, putting that boys, image in Sorry, boys, i got to go hang a rat. <laughs> Back as soon as I can, probably 15 to 20. <laughs> Honestly, a gentleman never hangs yeah, a rat. Look, I thought I was a rat. It was more like a mouse. <laughs> I think it was just gas. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like I talked about before, there was the two main things, ecclesiastical and secular, usually with uh, the criminal animals uh, who were being pests, like rats, etc. cetera. Uh, they, went to this, uh, they went to the ecclesiastical courts, whereas, like, the murderous pigs and that, the pets and the farm animals and stuff, they went to the secular courts and could end up being executed. But, yeah, that's why the rats, it seemed like, all the other cases, they would just be like the church going, that's it, rats, you're going to hell. We warned you. <laughs> that's it. Six months of Sunday school, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Bad luck. You like that? Okay. Oh, you want to talk back? Let's make it eight months. Okay. Eight fun. All right. We're going to do uh, six rosemaries. <laughs> uh, as Gergen writes, the guilty animals, in inverted commas, guilty animals, were usually solemnly requested to vacate the lands or vineyards they had been devastating within a given period of time, often six days. If the animals failed to leave, then the church solemnly pronounced a curse against the off, uh, the offending creatures. For all practical purposes, it was sort of like animal excommunication wow. in which the maleficent animals were considered damned. Oh, so, my gosh. All right. Well, ah? we gave you six days. You're still hanging about? Enjoy hell for eternity. <laughs> yeah? Happy? Well, you shouldn't be. We've been- more than reasonable. Okay. Couldn't have been more patient. Unbelievable. <laughs> These this, rats. If this is what you want, we don't want to do this. No. Okay, but- This is this is horrifying for us. You've made your beds. Yeah. <laughs> your tiny little rat beds. You've made your little rat beds. <laughs> now you're going to have to rat sleep in those rat beds. <laughs> but yeah, as strange as it was, it could be seen as a win-win for the church as well, as Gergen writes, if the pests left, then the church's anathema had worked. Alternatively, if the pests remain, then the anathema's failure 
could be attributed to the sins of the people. Oh, they didn't leave. Well, I guess that's because you guys have been sinful. Honestly, come on. (laughs) It's a sweet loophole for the church. We're so dumb. Humans. It's so embarrassing. (laughs) I don't know. To me, I've, you know, I grew up fully believing in all that stuff. You know, I still love to believe in some of it, but the- Back then, they didn't know. They didn't know they're why not, anything happened. They're putting happened. rats on trial. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's a that bit. That I bit think is silly. fucking stupid. <laughs> okay, no, right. I, I've met some pretty evil animals out there. Oh, I, yeah. just, I just, I just want to stand up for dog? humans. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, I'll cut you. <laughs> and he gets that from me. <laughs> I just want to stand up for humans here, and I think you know. Oh, humans are so dumb. No, you're right. Humans are bad. It's so funny that they're like, all right, well, uh, this pig has murdered on purpose. And it is an evil sitting pig. It's so funny. Let's make him wear pants. <laughs> Come into the courtroom. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, right. put, you push All me. Right. I got to hang a, a disappointed pig. Now I got to hang a pig. Can't eat it. Great. Don't yeah. eat the pig. What a waste. You've wasted your life, young man. Because, <laughs> like, best case scenario for this pig, it's found innocent. It grows up. What they slit its throat, then six weeks later, it's bacon anyway. Yeah. Living that, out its purpose. That's the best case scenario. Yeah. <laughs> The funny thing is, and you might not have considered this, the pig has no idea what's going no! on. No! <laughs> the pigs are just like, why am I inside? Yeah, why am I here now? <laughs> what's oh, going okay. on? And they're just seeing humans go, wah, 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 which is Matt speaking French. Wah, wah, ha, 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 ha. Jess, how dare you say that? Sorry, I'm not doing the <laughs> the hand gesture. Yeah, but what you said was, was pretty, pretty offensive. It was a bit crook, but only you understood. <laughs> oh. Hey! Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that do, friend? Yeah. <laughs> but it's always the hand gestures, this, and then you go ha ha ha. Seven, 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 seven. That's you doing freaky French. En français. Yeah. <laughs> seven. Uh, in 1993, a film titled "The Hour of the Pig," or uh, later released in America as the much duller. The Advocate, uh, was released. That sucks. And it was loosely based on the great lawyer Shazonez's career of trying to get animals off. And (laughs) Colin Firth plays the lead role. The Uh, the lead pig. No, no, the the Shazonez. I think he's a very versatile. He's very good. Very versatile. 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 Yeah. 1993 uh, Firth as well. He can do drama. He can do romantic comedies. He can do oink. He can (laughs) do- He can do oink like no one else can do oink. But these days, I would say pigs should play pig characters. Oinksploitation <laughs> films of the 1990s. Yeah. Uh, I think underrated. Um, beautiful subgenre, as the French <laughs> might say. A beautiful subgenre. <laughs> <laughs> A beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Is Donald Duck on trial? <laughs> well, if he plays his cards wrong. <laughs> He's walking around with no pants he, on. He refuses yeah. to put on. A top and no pants. Uh, yeah, mate, yeah. he's got a bloody child. Don't you worry if about you're, that. If you're, like, if you're going to put on some clothes, yeah, let's and not cover all. the junk. Yeah. you got a corkscrew dick, mate. Oh, cover it up. I was driving along the other day and and it was like a it was a Sunday morning um, and and we drove along and there was a guy on the at the cafe like on the street, you know, yes. he's sitting at a he's sitting at a table on the street. Well, he's not sitting; he's standing. He's talking to people that are sitting there. He's got um, sort of blue, dark blue jeans on, nothing on the top, really like kind of gross slicked back hair, and just something about the way he was standing there, the body language, the gesticulation. I was like. He looks like the biggest asshole I've ever seen in my life. No shirt on. The reverse Daffy. Oh, it was awful. That's reverse Donald. Sorry, Daffy's just full nude. Yeah, the half Daff. <laughs> what are you just thinking? I just like he oh, looks like a fucking tool. You're the worst person to get stuck in a conversation with, and he thinks he's God's gift. And I was like, you suck. And then you wind down the window and say, "Hey, you, stop talking to him. He's really bored." Yeah, that's what I did say. Yeah, and he, and then, yeah. He started crying. <laughs> and I was like, I don't care about your feelings that I've hurt. Turns mm. out he lost his shirt in a horrible accident. Yeah. <laughs> and it turned out- He was actually a saint. When, when you were pointing a finger at him, three fingers were pointing back at you. And I was like, oh my God, I'm shirtless. And one thumb was pointing <laughs> up at the sky. Yeah. So, it makes you think. It does make you think, doesn't it? Who <laughs> was obviously involved as well. Yeah. One for the big he, guy. He credited it all. <laughs> one Thumbs for up the big for you, big guy. guy. <laughs> Can I have that for stand-up? 
Matt. So Matt is trying to write his new show at the moment, and or is trying new material, and you are desperate. Everything you come up, you go. Could that be something? Is that something? I didn't can even I have really that? say that. That was your line about the thumb. But you can have it. But people will know. People will know. I, I want if you go see Matt this year, and he does that joke. That's I. I hope it will kill, but I hope people yell out, Dave. Yep. Damn it. <laughs> Edit that bit out, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm not doing any any stand up this year, so please go for it. I mean, I gave you the setup. You just did the Shut funny up. bit, okay? <laughs> all you Shut did, up. all I did you did was bit. the job. I did the easy <laughs> bit, the concept. That's the hard bit. Um, yeah. So I so those rats on trial. I read a, a bunch of other ones with similar trials with rats or mice being charged for ruining crops, or in another example, termites. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get out the news. <laughs> Doesn't get much smaller than that. <laughs> According to Gergen in- uh, Yeah, we put them on trial. <laughs> they started eating the pew. The ultimate disrespect. The disrespect. Yeah. Can't believe it. Right in front of her eyes. Oh, God. These Doing dogs. Va- vandalism, writing their name in the wood with their teeth. I assume that's what they're doing. <laughs> Unbelievable. So disrespectful. Uh, According to Gergen in 1713- uh, Sorry about the pronunciation here. This is Portuguese, Dave. Um, <laughs> you mentioned it before. Piedade no Maranhão uh, in Brazil. A Franciscan or Franciscan monastery was overcome by termites. The insects reportedly devoured the friars' food, uh, destroyed their furniture, and even threatened to topple the walls of the monastery. They threatened. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't push hey, me. Hey, you. If you don't, if you don't fucking give us $400,000. <laughs> I'll topple this, I will. <laughs> this is all gone. I'll go. Ah, nah, 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 yeah. nah, 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 I'll do it. I'll do it. And I got made so. Uh, guess what? I'm a little peckish. Yeah. <laughs> all right. My, uh, you know, Big Greg. Oh, you know what fucking Big Greg, mate? He hasn't eaten in days. <laughs> <laughs> what, four suitcases? <laughs> Unmarked pills? <laughs> I'll know. I'll know. I'll know. I'll check them. Yeah. I'll nibble them. Don't make me sick, big break <laughs> on <to> you. <laughs> so menacing. <laughs> and the monks are like, what can we do? What's happening? We have to turn to the These sheriff. threatening termites. <laughs> we need to take this to ecclesiastical court, <laughs> which I don't like to do because it's so hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> so the friars requested an act of interdiction and excommunication from the bishop, and the termites were summoned to appear before an ecclesiastical tribunal. At the proceeding, the lawyer appointed to defend the insects argued that because they were God's creatures, the termites were entitled to sustenance. Oh, this is what I was talking about before. It wasn't weevils. Apologise for that. Uh, Imagine termites being, hate getting mixed up with weevils. Being told you're representing the termites. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this could be my big break. It this did huge things for the pig guy in France. <laughs> yeah. He ended up being the top exactly. dog. Exactly, he was huge. Uh, the trial ended with a compromise in which the friars promised to provide suitable habitat for the termites, who in turn were commanded to go and remain at that site. (laughs) The proceeding was typical of the ecclesiastical trials in the strict adherence to legal procedure, the types of arguments made on behalf of the animal defendants, and the proposed compromise by the people alleging harm. They're like, I think that makes way more sense. They haven't gone, we're killing uh, killing, killing the termites. They're going, hey, termites. We've got another spot for you, okay? You're over here. Fair's fair. You guys are over here. You can eat all of that till your yeah, heart's content. Yeah, that's right. The the Protestant church. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Go nuts. Go nuts over there. That's Bring fine. Bring a friend. That's yours. Yep. Or vice versa. If there's, I don't know if there's a Catholic. Which one's a... No, monastery's a Catholic, right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. But, um... Or... I have I Oh! <laughs> I'm sweating all of a sudden. <laughs> oh! I don't want to. Yeah. Anyway. Um. So yeah. So and like obviously the termites don't ter- understand no, that. No, because they're termites. Even you less said- than the pigs. Franciscan. Yes. You're talking Catholic, baby. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. I thought I was on the money there. But Oof, what a relief, though. To you know. really don't want to. Like I don't want to uh, start up any troubles. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Weevil. Oh no. No. Oh God. <laughs> Several smaller Protestant Franciscan orders exist as well, notably in the Anglican and Lutheran traditions. But, but odds are, odds are, Ooh. if you're a betting man. Oh, God. Either uh, way, insert the joke still works. They put them on whoever the opposition yeah. is. Yes. Yeah, the joke works, and that's all that matters. Yes. Yeah. 
And it was a good joke, <laughs> okay? <laughs> uh, Very clever. So, that was termites. We also had weevils on trial. Oh, there are weevils. Yeah, there are weevils. According to Uga Needham, uh, writing for the Sydney Criminal Lawyers website, wine growers in Bordeaux were angered by the fact that a group of weevils were devouring their prized grapes. They brought the matter to the attention of authorities who brought the weevils before an ecclesiastical court. The weevils were appointed a lawyer named Claude Moel, who argued that God made plants for all animals to consume. Okay. When I said the weevils were before, I was talking about the weevils. Okay. okay. Is this the most tedious episode since the last one I did? <laughs> <laughs> so, the weevils were appointed a lawyer named Claude Moel, who argued that God made plants for all animals to consume, not just humans, and that the weevils were just doing what came natural to them. It's so logical. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. The argument worked to an extent. Rather than executing the hapless animals, the ecclesiastical judge, which I don't think they could have done anyway, but the ecclesi- ecclesiastical I'm judge shoot the weevils. ordered that public prayers be held. Another plague of weevils returned 30 years later. So this is like what I was talking about before. So the church says, all right, weevils, we're going to pray for you, yep. but you better ship up or shape out. <laughs> the opposite of that. Yeah. Shape up or ship out. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> they weren't so- that saying hadn't quite settled. Yeah, they, yeah. Weren't, they were this figuring is, it out. Yeah, yeah. Um. So they and then they went away. So everyone's like, "Oh, thank you so much, ecclesiastical tribunal. You did it." Yeah, yet I mean, again. Th- thirty years. You go, holy shit! They have. They done did it. it. Uh, but yeah, thirty years. They came back and were subjected to a lengthy trial involving some of the greatest legal minds of the day. Unfortunately, we will never know their fate, as the page of the archives that recorded the verdict has been destroyed. Evans, the great man, Edmund Evans. The mm-hmm. guy who wrote the Bible on all of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, has suggested, and this is good stuff. He suggested, this is why he's the goat. <laughs> he suggested that the page may have been eaten by weevils who are unhappy about the verdict. Oh, that's good. I can only assume that's true. Yeah. Because what other, what other explanation is there? I think it's a good point. And ha- weevils are notoriously very good readers. Yes. Yes. Um, voracious. They're, yeah. They're, and they're voracious. Pro- prolific. <laughs> And and not just like they don't just stick to one genre. No, mm. well, they have it all. Yeah. One yeah. one minute they're they they're doing romance, then they're doing Roman history. Yeah. Mm. Anything with Rome. Yeah, they're doing all the rows. Can't yeah. be stopped. Rowing. That's why they, that's why they love uh vineyards. They love rows. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Rows as far as the eye can see. Can I put uh for listeners who aren't on the Patreon, we do a, a yearly uh do go on awards and uh, the one just gone, we did the first annual Best Evan Award. Can I put up Edmund Evans for Best Evan for oh, this That's year? a good early nominee. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, animals could be charged for being pests in other ways than just spoiling crops, as our great mate Gergen writes. In one reported instance, a group of swallows disrupted churchgoers with their chirping and earned the additional vexation of Egbert, Bishop of Trier in Germany, when they sacrilegiously defiled his head and vestments with their droppings when he was officiating at the altar. Are you saying they shat on his head whilst he was giving a little speech? Yeah, in church. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's making it. Like, that's I, pretty I've been to mass a lot of times, <laughs> and uh, that would have really added a bit of something to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the one As you're a kid, I'm going, that, yeah. Yeah. They blur together. Let's that was the best church ever. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember when the bird shat on yeah. the priest? <laughs> Father Foynes. <laughs> it was the name of my priest. Father Mackay was mine. Father yeah. Foynes? Father Foynes, Irish guy. Mm-hmm. And he had a- Because they, everyone, they all, all the priests give it their own uh, little- A little flavour. A little, little flavour. His one was doing during uh, communion. I'm sure I've told you this before because I, I love it so much, but he'd go- They'd say body of Christ and give you the, the <laughs> piece of bread. He'd go, body of Christ. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, you have body said of that. Christ. I was about to say, do you want me to do it? Because I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> body of Christ. Is that, it's just fun that at some point he's gone, I had a little That's bit of my good. own spin to this. Yeah, and then 20 years later gone, I'm still doing this. Yeah. This, just, is what they, this is what people come to expect. This is what they want to say. They want a big show. <laughs> he's about to say it. Body of Christ. <laughs> and like doing that hundreds of times in a row. And is he doing it with a bit of a smile on his face? Like, can't no, I this. don't remember ever seeing him smile. <laughs> Was he Irish? He might not have been Irish. This sort of picture, Catholic priests in the 90s to be Irish. Um, 
for some reason. I think that's where a lot of them came thinking from. Thinking of Ronan Keating. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of <laughs> boy bands. I'm thinking of Westlife. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. The bishop's getting shat on. No. Yeah. <laughs> And so, where were we? Bishop, Bishop being <laughs> there Of course. And that's we're it. back. And yeah. also the bishop's name, which uh, I think we need to pause on for a second, Egbert. Yeah. yeah. I love it. So Incredible. Um, so, he's getting shot on and the bishop responded by levying a curse against the birds. Perfect. Forbidding them to enter the church on pain of death. Okay. It's that's like, reasonable. You can come back in, but you will pay with your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to Evans, the great man, it is still a popular superstition at trial. That if a swallow flies into the cathedral, it immediately falls to the ground and gives up the ghost. This is back in 1906. I don't know if that's still the case, but apparently back then. Still. Mm. I mean, it's difficult to hang a bird. Yes. That's really tricky. It would actually, it would, yeah, yeah, it would just keep <laughs> flapping around. Yeah, come on. Yeah. They'll have to land eventually. Oh, man, that's true. Eventually they'd tire and ugh, that's a way more brutal way. Yeah, that's pretty grim. Actually. Am I saying is is Trier right, Dave? The German German place, T R I E R. T R I E R. Not sure. I don't know. Mm. I've never heard of Trier. Mm. I don't, and I can almost guarantee that we're wrong. Uh, yeah. Trier. Also, don't worry. I found a guy that pronounces words here. On, so we can, oh, on the internet, we can probably find out how to say Trier. Let's have a listen. Okay. Hello. Trier. 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 Tria. That is a uh, Tria. Julian Miguel. Tria. I love Julian Miguel. <laughs> I'm Julian Miguel. He's so everything's like every yeah. word is round. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's up and down. Huh? Yeah. Qu- quickly, just a uh, quick run about b- bestiality. Fun fact. Okay. I always thought it was spelled B A S T. Got auto corrected. I'm like, huh? Be- it's like bestiality. It's best? Really. Is that right, or am I? I is it just know. a different word altogether? Anyway, this will be very quick. Uh, last time I talked about this, uh, people asked for a little heads up, so I'm giving you that. But it'll only oh, be okay, gotcha, gotcha. Quick gotcha. two minute story. So Needham also writes about a case involving a donkey. Uh, like I say, BCLE, but a very quick one. Uh, won't go into any of the details either. Needham writes, in 1750, a French man was sentenced to death for having intercourse with a donkey. The donkey was acquitted after neighbours gave character evidence that they had known her for four years and that she was virtuous and well-behaved. The donkey. The donkey. <laughs> According to their character references, the donkey was never involved in any scandal and was, quote, in word and deed and in all her habits of life, a most honest creature. Uh, it was found that the donkey did not participate voluntarily and she was acquitted on that basis, which seems like obviously yeah. animals can't give consent. Like, obviously that's clear, but apparently in the, the olden days it was not that clear. But character statements for a donkey. Yeah. And it's so great that the humans did do that yeah. because apparently it was quite common for both man and beast to be put to death for such offences. Wow. Like, there's one example which happened in Massachusetts in 1642 when a mare, a cow, and other lesser cattle were executed along with Thomas Granger, who'd been getting it on with them. Oh. So, I mean, Thomas Granger, what a what a, a, a legacy to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Not everyone's name gets remembered. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that was a little, little, uh, little detour. Little detour. Well, you I, know, I've looked at it. Is, I'm now on the Oxford English Dictionary website. Bestiality, it is B E S T. And you know, as we learned on your Ox- Oxford English Dictionary report, they give you the, the origin. It yeah. says, word origin, late Middle English from the old French for bestialite, which is from bestial, from late Latin bestialis, from Latin bestia, which means beast. Right. So it takes us the long way around, but yeah. it almost came back to where it began. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny. I think I'm guessing maybe American English puts the A in. Yeah, probably. Because it makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, it and does. And America seems to like to uh, make language make more sense, which mm-hmm. uh, for some reason <laughs> people here and in England seem to rally against. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, well, There's think- a you in neighbour. You know. Yeah, yeah. We're really- I really care about that you. <laughs> what we should do, if we were making it make more sense, words would be spelt very differently. Yeah. There would be no O or U in neighbour. It'd be just end in A. 
Yeah. Neighbour. Yeah. E R would disappear. Yeah. Water. Water. Yeah. Beautiful language. There's no T in water. It's water. It's W A R D A. Water. 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 <laughs> Glass of water. Water. Can I get a tumbler of water? I should say um, some people did suggest best American accent as a category of the uh, two go waters. Beast American accent, I think. <laughs> Water. Water. I, well, I think that, that would be a landslide to you, Bob. Yeah. But do they also get best Australian accent, which I think that I could get away with, yes. with pizzeria. Pizzeria, rise of lights. Another one that seemed to come up a few times was roosters being charged with being unnatural, and that is because they laid an egg. Oh. <laughs> it was a chicken. It seems, <laughs> it seems like, yeah, it was probably just chickens. <laughs> But they were just. This is unnatural. But like, I think that I think sometimes when there's no rooster in the hen house, one of the chickens will start behaving like the rooster sometimes, okay. and maybe that confused people. There's a oh, different theories. You know what it is? It's just it's it's typical because it's a woman taking a leadership role, <laughs> and must be a man. Heretic just, witch. People just cannot handle it. Yeah. Ridiculous. Oh my god. Hen- well, I think yeah. Th- they said it was because a, a rooster laid an egg, but it was actually a hen wearing pants. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they, they said, said ah, 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 ah. get that dress back on. Yeah, young lady. <laughs> Either way. Very unladylike. Death. Yeah, <laughs> death regardless, but at least die in a dress. Thank you. <laughs> unladylike. Dave, is that a pun? Wasn't meant to be. And not because they lay eggs. Any, oh, uh, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't get it. No, I didn't I, either. Didn't but get I, it. Well, I didn't mean it. It wasn't a- Like it, nobody would have thought that. Great. Nobody listening would have thought, oh, that's a great pun because they well, lay no eggs. No one would say it's a great pun. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I find it find that funny when people will write that, either pun not intended or pun intended, yeah. which is basically what I did in real time there, and I apologize mm. for that. But <laughs> it's like, you've got, when it's in written form, you're like, you've got time to either take yeah. it in or out. Yeah, plenty yeah. of time. It's Just like, edit it. Yep. It's like that Elton John lyric where he goes, if I was a painter- but then again, no. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> Just change the lyric. Change. Stupid thoughts, stupid thoughts. Yeah. And the best part is he had to pay someone else to write that <laughs> yeah. lyric. And he went, great job, Bernie. Great job, Bernie. <laughs> Thanks, Bernie. God, you're, you're a wordsmith. Bernie, Bernie's done it Bernie. again. But then again, no. 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 <laughs> or a man. I can't remember the rest. Anyway. Something, something, show. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. These unnatural eggs, egg-laying roosters. This one was suggested specifically by Devon Bruns from Cedar Rapids in Iowa. Oh, what a great name Devon Bruns is. Love it. Was there not a Geelong footballer called Devon Bruns? <laughs> uh, neither of us know. Sorry to speak for you, Dave. I didn't know We either. don't know. I don't, yeah. I. That can't be. That's such a Neville Bruns. Okay. Sorry, Close. Neville Bruns. Close, but no cigar. Close, Sorry, but Devin. not right. <laughs> Do you know Neville? Hit us up. Devin, you know Neville? <laughs> Do you know Neville? Devin and Neville. Devin and Neville. Oh, my God. What a family. Oh, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just say it and people go, huh? Yeah. Is that one? Something must have been in there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Devin wanted me to talk about uh, egg laying chickens. <laughs> no, sorry. And, uh, roosters. Uh, hey, please talk about egg laying roosters. Love from Devin. <laughs> Okay. Per- perhaps the best known version of this occurred in 1474 in the Swiss city of Basel. Uh, a, a writing for the Comparative Civilizations Review in a piece titled Nature on Trial, the case of the rooster that laid an egg. E.V. Walter wrote, in 14, in 14, it's so funny that there's all these serious legal yeah. scholarly <laughs> articles written in all these journals that I'm quoting. that are just like dead serious about the time a rooster was on trial. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so solvable. Yeah. <laughs> Don't they say the law is an ass. Is that can that be worked in some way? Your words, not mine. <laughs> oh, pun intended. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> How's your father? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh go on there. Mm. Uh, in 1474, a chicken passing for a rooster laid an egg, and was prosecuted by law in the city of Basel. The animal was sentenced to, uh, in a solemn judi- This is what they always talk about. It's solemn. Mm. Like, they're just stressing. This isn't a joke. <laughs> they were very seriously this is saying. <laughs> uh, Your Honour, the jury has come to a verdict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's- l- you know. That rooster did it. <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, it was a solemn judicial proceeding and condemned the rooster, really, chicken, uh, to be burned alive for the heinous and unnatural crime of laying an egg. Like all these punishments- Smelt amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and they weren't allowed to eat it. That's so unfair. The, oh, you want the to villagers it? are just standing there mouth watering. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Man. There's a lot of poor people and peasants going, please. They put it on a rotisserie. Yeah. <laughs> It's been cooking for ages, just falling apart. It's beautiful. Everyone on the court's like, do you want to get red rooster on the way home? <laughs> and they, these, they, they all seem like full-on punishments, right, hanging in. But these the humans were being punished like this a lot. And I, I've just got through a uh, listening to a book about old kings and queens of England. So many of them and people around that time just having their heads lopped off. Mm. Oh, you you also think you have a claim to the throne? Head off. Well, I'm. You're arrested because you're a, you're a threat to my position. Yeah, yeah. Lopping your head off. But if I wasn't the one chosen by God, then I'd be down there and you'd be up here. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Honestly, I'm. This is really looking good for me. Uh, yeah, that's right. They justify it. Well, and they used they used to. I mean, all of this stuff. It's a similar idea. They go, well, we won that battle. God wanted us to win. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh. So, the execution took place with as great solemnity as would be- have been observed in consigning a heretic to the flames and was witnessed by an immense crowd of uh, mouth-watered townsmen and peasants. <laughs> I put the mouth bit in. <laughs> That's according to uh, the great man, Edmund P. Evans. Uh, the same kind of prosecution took place in Switzerland again as late as 1730. Wow. You know, that, like, you can- This is, like, some of these cases, you're still picturing, like- it's, you know, mud floors and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's it, society that barely resembles ours. Days, but yeah, yeah, but 1730, it's starting to look a little bit- Yeah. Like, if I, you go to the country, you're walking, through, you're walking through those same buildings that they were. Yeah, that's right. I've been to pubs that were around yeah. back then. <laughs> uh, uh, what was the big fear about rooster laid eggs anyway? Well, I went to someone who knows this stuff. This is off the Murano Chicken Farm blog. Oh, okay. Uh the owner of the Murano Chicken Farm blogs, and uh, mm. she got into the weeds a bit with this one, uh, writing, At Basel in 1474, it appears that a cock was accused of the enormous crime of having laid an egg. He was brought to trial and condemned to be burned alive as a warning to all cocks not to lay eggs, from which it was well known uh, would have hatched a cockatrice or basilisk. This is what they're worried about. Oh, okay. A rooster laying an egg. Like, this is where the superstition stuff comes into play. Roosters start laying eggs. Those things can turn out to be evil monsters. Wow. A cockatrice is a mythical beast, essentially a two-legged dragon or serpent-like creature with a rooster's head. It has the reputed ability to kill people by either looking at them, touching them, or sometimes breathing on them. Uh, (laughs) This is all from the blog. In the event that your rooster laid an egg- and you did not want this egg to hatch and bring uh, bring about mass destruction, do not bring it inside the house for any reason. In the event that yes. this happens. If you don't want mass But if you do, you can bring it in. Yeah, yeah. bring it on in. Well, yeah. I mean- See so, what happens. Because, like, the belief was, like, witches were doing this on purpose and stuff, yep. you know. Um, but if you're not a witch <laughs> and you don't want to bring mass destruction- Can I stress this enough? If you're not a, a woman in the workplace wearing pants, okay- <laughs> A demonic witch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cock eggs were believed to be used- Cock egg. <laughs> All right, settle down, cock egg. <laughs> <laughs> cock eggs were believed to be used in witchcraft, so it needed to be destroyed immediately, lest its very existence attract charges of witchcraft. Just incubating a cock's egg will not produce this fearsome beast, though. A toad must incubate the egg at the behest of Satan for it to turn into a cockatrice. What the fuck? So, I guess this is what, like, that's not happening by accident. Yeah. A witch has to get involved to do this. Yeah, she's got to get the toad to sit on the egg. Yeah. Uh, Although, as time has gone by, the toad in this tale has often been replaced by a serpent. So, you've got options. Uh, (laughs) If there's not a toad handy, grab Mm. a serpent. Yeah, great. A basilisk, on the other hand, is a legendary reptile reputed to be a serpent king, which was hybrid from a rooster and a serpent, who can cause death with a single glance. They're quite similar. The basilisk- is alleged to uh, be hatched from a cockerel, uh, by a cockerel from the egg of a serpent or toad. So basically, the reverse cockatrice. Right. Okay. One's a toad egg with yep. a a cock on it, and the other one's a cock egg with a toad on it. Mm-hmm. Um, Say cock egg again. Cock egg. Maybe th- these are new nicknames for the group chat. You're, you're definitely cock, I'm cock egg, egg now. Dave's toad egg. I'm still daddy. <laughs> Dave's. 
cock on a toad egg. I'm toad on a cock egg. Oh, that's confusing for you. <laughs> yeah, I don't like this at all. I don't like this at all. All right, we'll just throwing out ideas. <laughs> no, bad ideas, no bad ideas. No bad ideas. Those are bad ideas. <laughs> So yeah, you can you can sort of understand why such a serious crime led to the rooster being taken to court. Yeah. It's like this thing is is possibly giving birth to something that will kill us all. Yeah, okay, okay, I understand that then. Uh, we're getting towards the end. Uh, Dave alluded to this story before. This one will be well known to primate listeners uh, and Dave, and and not so much Jess, <laughs> uh, even though she's been there on one of our UK tours. I made us go on a detour through the city of Hartlepool mm-hmm. to see a monkey statue. Um, which is, was actually a chimp. They've got that wrong, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Won't go into that. <laughs> and I think we do, do you remember we went into a pub and I, yeah. I went and asked the, yeah, the, I had a the pie woman behind the bar. Awesome. Yeah, the woman behind the bar. I brought it up and I remember she didn't really like me. She wasn't like, she's like, oh, yeah, another oh, yeah. tourist talking about <laughs> fucking monkeys. We don't talk about that monkey around here. Yeah, that was the vibe I got. But, I, yeah, I think depending on who you talk Maybe to- Maybe she was related. She was a distant relative oh, to the, of the monkey. Oh, my yeah, God. Oh, my gosh. She was the missing link. <laughs> Uh, Maybe, because I remember her. Anyway, I'm going to tell you the story via Ben Johnson from Historic UK, who writes, A French ship was spotted floundering and sinking off the Hartlepool coast during the Napoleonic Wars of the early 19th century. So this is even more recent, you know, early 1800s. Suspicious of enemy ships and nervous of possible invasion, the good folk of Hartlepool rushed down to the beach, where amongst the wreckage of the ship, they found the only survivor, the ship's monkey which was apparently dressed in a miniature military-style uniform. <laughs> That's so cute. It's so cute. So cute. Do mm. you this alluded it? Oh. Well. Depends and, on its rank. And, <laughs> and, and, yeah. Do, is there respect across enemies? You know, back then. And no, probably- sorry. I meant more meant he's uh, oh. people on the ship with him. Yeah. Right, like his yes. colleagues. Yeah. I would hope so. So, I imagine he's pretty high up. How does it work with saluting? Do you have to salute people higher than you? Surely you don't have to salute somebody the same rank as you. Hmm. You just you fist bump them. Yeah. You yeah. say, sup. Sup. But you don't say sup to an admiral. No. You salute an admiral. Mm. Yeah, Unless it's another admiral. Or you're a five-star general. Yeah. Is that a rank? Or Probably. A sea lord. An American one. Sea what about a brigadier general? Brigadier. What happens if you yeah. see two brigadier generals <laughs> across each other's paths? Mm. Well, they, they fuck. <laughs> they have to fuck. They have it's, to fuck. It's the rules. There. <laughs> They have to they fuck. Have to. They always see each other like, oh, oh God. for fuck's sake. We've really got to time this You're better. doing this on purpose. I swear <laughs> to God you're doing this on purpose. I'm not. i got to tell you, I don't hate it. <laughs> it is good to I see I was just it. getting a sandwich. This is so annoying. It's so embarrassing. But anyway, back to mine. Come on. Come on. Oh, do we have to do it here? But right by the sandwich machine? Oh, my God, if I must. <laughs> Hartlepool is a long way from France, and most of the populace had never met or even seen a Frenchman. Some satirical cartoons of the time pictured the French as monkey-like creatures with tails and claws. So perhaps the locals could be forgiven to, for deciding that the monkey in its uniform must be a Frenchman. And a French spy at that. There was a trial to ascertain whether the monkey was guilty of spying or not. So I'm glad there was, you know. And they don't speak French, so the sounds the monkey's making, they're like, yeah. that could be, that's French. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. Like, it's that, <laughs> that's the language they speak. <laughs> Someone, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like that. Uh, so yeah, and I, I liked that there was a trial. Well, all these I'm like, thank God, due process. Was yeah, <laughs> thank God, right. justice has been served. <laughs> uh, however, not surprisingly, the monkey was unable to answer any of the court's questions and was found guilty. <laughs> Again, this is I think this is before the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> In America, which didn't affect uh, English law anyway, which is interesting. Uh, The townsfolk then dragged him into the town square and hanged him. Over the centuries, the legend has been used to taunt the residents of Hartlepool. Indeed, still today. That's why. Uh, you, that's why she. Didn't yeah, like the publican was like, "God damn it, man!" But no, I think it's mixed because uh, at football matches between local rivals Darlington and Hartlepool United, the chant "Who hung the monkey." Can often be heard, which is interesting because it technically should be who hanged the monkey. But but is that who's is that saying, even true? Yeah. Who, who's saying it? The Hartlepool people or the opposition? I'm I think the opposition. the opposition. Yeah. All oh, right. It's not like who hung the monkey. We, we did. did. <laughs> and we'll hang you too. Oh wow! But most it's menacing Hartley Pudlians or Hartle, Hartley Pudlians. Yeah. However, love the story. Apparently, Hartle Puddles. Hartlepool, 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 oh. Hartlepool. Uh, United's mascot is a monkey called Hangus the Monkey. <laughs> Come 
believe it. And the local rugby union team, Hartlepool Rovers, are known as the Monkey Hangers. So oh. they have they've got they've linked into it. I thought it was the yeah. soccer team that were the football team that are the Monkey Hangers, but it's the rugby team, is it? Yes. Whereas, but the football team has Hangus the monkey. Who hung the monkey? We, we do. do. <laughs> we, we do. do. Uh, the successful mayoral candidate, mayoral candidate in the 2002 local election, Stuart Drummond, campaigned dressed in the costume of Hangus the Monkey using the election slogan, free bananas for school children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got my foot. <laughs> A promise he was unfortunately unable to keep. However, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've done the maths and it's going to bankrupt our city. I'm sorry. The bananas are much more expensive than I thought they were. I didn't were. think, but I don't buy bananas that often. I didn't know how expensive they was were. Was this around the time? This wasn't around the time of the, the big banana shortage. <laughs> how unlucky would you have been? Uh, however, this appears not to have dented his popularity as he went on to be re elected two more times. Whatever the truth, the legend of Hartlepool and the hanged monkey has endured for over 200 years. So, yeah, like. There's a strong chance this is bullshit, but that, that mm. is a story that they've got behind. Anyway, let's start bringing this home um, and talking a bit about why why these uh, trials happen and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, there's all been all sorts of animals who've been up on trial, and there's a bunch more, to be honest. Um, couldn't go through them all. Although, if I had more time, I reckon this could have been about a 10-hour episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Uh, as Lee writes, although exact numbers are hard to come by, more than 100 cases are known to have taken place between the 10th and 18th century involving all manner of creatures and crimes, rats and locusts with the destruction of crops, cockerels with laying eggs in defiance of their nature, and dogs with theft. But pigs were by far most common criminals. But, yeah, so, I mean, based on those numbers, 100 cases over centuries, it's not like it's happening all the time. Yeah. But it's also, you know, some people say there probably were a lot more, but they weren't documented. It's, you know, it's hard to know for sure. Yeah, because those uh, little weevils have eaten all the documents. That's right. Sneaky little weevils. Uh, pigs, of course, should have never been put on trial. It's a bit I mean, controversial to say, but I believe that. Uh, it was a basic principle of Roman law that animals could not be culpable as they lack reason and were incapable of harboring criminal intent. <laughs> so, couldn't be guilty of a crime. As Lee says- any offence committed by an animal was the responsibility of its owner or the person whose care it had been entrusted. If a pig harmed someone because a swine herd could not control it, for example, the swine herd, rather than the animal, would be liable on grounds of negligence. Swine herd, by the way, is a term I hadn't heard before. But like it, a shepherd, but it's for a, pigs? It's a pig shepherd, which I'm a big fan of. Me too. Uh, Lee continues, Alternatively, if it was felt that no one could reasonably have prevented the offence occurring, the swine herd either had to make reparations or hand over the offending animal to the injured party. Uh, but unfortunately for those animals, areas of France didn't necessarily warm to Roman law and instead favoured their own traditions, which were often shaped by folk beliefs. But putting pigs on trial never really made much sense anyway, as Lee questions. Even if pigs could, in principle, be held responsible for their actions... Why did communities feel the need to bother prosecuting them at all? Surely it would have been easier and cheaper simply to have killed the guilty party on the spot rather than go through the rigmarole of a trial and public execution. Some, like Philippe de Bernmanois, uh, writing back in the 13th century, have argued that as the trials were so patently absurd, and this is back in the 13th century, the only reason for them to have existed would have been to enrich the local judges who heard the cases. They're like, this is just, they're just like, we're making cash from this. Oh. But Lee totally disagrees with this, saying the only problem with this, of course, was that since pigs were generally executed, there was nothing left for the judges to take for themselves. Indeed, the proceedings actually cost them money. Like I was talking about before, paying the animal defense lawyers. You know, the pigs aren't paying for that. The execution has got paid the same as if it was a human, same as the jailers. So they actually, each of these is costing uh the, the crown or whoever money, uh, adopting a rather different approach, Pierre Ayrault argued that the objective was more likely to be deterrence. Although a sow being found guilty is unlikely to dissuade other pigs from crime, <laughs> Ayrault uh, thought that it might help to convince people to take better care of their pigs and also be wary around animals. Well, then then um, uh, punish the people. Yeah. That I, would probably- That would make more sense. Yeah. And Lee agrees that- Logic doesn't That doesn't stack make any up, sense. Saying, as some historians have pointed out, if the intention was to deter, why were some animals tried and executed in absentia? 
If there was no pig twisting in the wind, what was there to stir greater vigilance? So, it's like none of these quite make any sense, but it seems hmm. that Lee believes a theory which has been put forward by Paul Schiff Berman, who I quoted earlier, and Berman's idea is that the whole point of the trials and executions was to ritually reimpose order on a universe which, after a child's death, must have seemed frighteningly random and unpredictable. By turning the pig into a human, putting it on a trial and executing it in public, all with the most scrupulous correctness, the world was made stable and comprehensible once again. It just maybe makes sense. It's, it's <laughs> somewhat theatre, but they're like, okay, the guilty party has been punished. Yeah. It wasn't a random chance. Yeah. yeah. See, the world now makes sense. Yes, we can move on. We, we kill the pa- pig. We put pants on it and then we killed we it. We killed yes. it. Huh? Ha- hey? Happy? Sense. Exactly. This pig puts Closure. its pants on like anyone yeah. else. <laughs> Um, <laughs> four legs at a time. <laughs> yeah, there was. There, I mean, I won't go into others, but there was an, another example. Uh, I think it was in India. There were uh, tribes from centuries ago that if uh, if someone was killed by a tiger, that family would then have to go and hunt that tiger down and kill it, and that would be seen as justice. But if they didn't, they'd have to at least get another tiger killed. And if they didn't do that, they would be sort of excluded for the from the community wow. until they made it happen. Oh my god. So not only are you mourning uh the death of someone so th- th- I think there's just this whole history around the world of things that you know, didn't quite make any mm. sense but it's based in in old superstitions and and whatnot. Uh there are some recent examples of animals being involved in court cases though luckily for modern day pigs they don't have to worry about uh the death penalty anymore. Okay. As far as I could f- Find. Oh, it's good to be a modern day pig. But France still does have some pretty weird uh, animals involved in trials occasionally. Uh, as Leslie B. McGregor wrote uh, in his uh, thesis, in 2013, in the French city of Tours, what would that be? Tours. 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 Tour. Could you get a man up? Tours. How do I spell that? T O U R S. Tours. So, in 2013, in the French city of Tours, a judge called forth a witness during the preliminary hearing of a murder case. The witness was a nine-year-old Labrador named Tango. This is in 2013. Tango's a good name. (laughs) That's a great name, isn't it? That is a great name. Uh, That rules. And Tango, the dog, and this is in 2013, was asked to confirm the allegations against his owner's alleged killer. The judge ordered the suspect to threaten Tango with a bat believing Tango's reaction would indicate whether the suspect had indeed been the killer. This is in 2013. Oh, my God. For the sake of fairness, a second Labrador named Norman was brought in to serve as a control group. The attorney for the defence thought the whole thing was absurd, saying, I find it very troubling for the French legal system. Uh, The results were inconclusive. And the whole enterprise was deemed a failure. That's so embarrassing. Like- I can't. That all sounds like a thing that happened four hundred years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're like, bring in the dog, and just watch what the dog does. <laughs> if it's afraid of this man with a bat, <laughs> we know he's a killer. Yeah. Imagine being like you're having to threaten a dog, hoping that it doesn't react. My a certain dog way. Re- got scared of some flowers the other day. Mm. He also got scared of wrapping paper at Christmas time. Was that because you were you ha- holding the roll up above your head threateningly? Yeah, I was screaming at him. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think dogs can necessarily be trusted to consistently <laughs> be scared of the be same trusted. thing. <laughs> you know? Did you find a pronunciation? There? He doesn't say that, oh but I do God. have something else from uh, Julian Miguel. This is a different guy? Oh, no. Me, Tim. Tor. <laughs> That's it without the S. Okay. That's I was going to tour. When you said, you said I didn't, wasn't able to find it, but I found, I thought you meant you found another guy saying it. But oh, no, yeah. I just found him saying tour. Tour. I just, I just enjoy his work. Because we do have I'd French go- listeners and I know they will be furious. I'd never yeah. go They expect else. me Sorry, they'll be to nail furious. it. They'll be furious. Furious. Yeah. They'll be furious. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> He's like the basiest guy ever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't you hear him one. when you're listening in a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, if Nathan Damon's listening in his uh, road train right yeah. now, he's just like, what, what just happening? happened? <laughs> uh, finally, here is a brief story about, and I know Jess likes bringing it back to Australia, so I've done that here. Another 2013 court case, because it- 
we've spent all, all episode thinking, geez, people are a bit silly in other countries, but uh, here's a story from Australia in 2013. Didn't we go to war with uh, emus? So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Who are we to, who are no, we to judge? Uh, yeah, certainly not. Um, according to Needham, animals are not deemed to be capable of committing criminal offences in modern day Australia. But a goat named Gary did make it to court in 2013. Gary's owner, Jimbo Bazoobie. Get <laughs> Jimbo. Jimbo Bazoobi is an all time great. <laughs> that is Jimbo. The fact that his goat's name was Gary. Was enough, but when I'm like, I've got to include this. Jimbo Bazooby. <laughs> Jimbo Bazooby. That's almost good enough that I kind of want to change Jack the Hat McVitie <laughs> to Jimbo Bazooby. <laughs> Chuck it in the Jimbo Bazooby. Oh. That's so good. I want a tattoo of Jimbo Bazooby. <laughs> Should we change one of the Patreon levels to the Jimbo Bazooby? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Do we have a dud? Are it's- we going to place on a <laughs> level that we need to really oh, zhuzh up? It's so good. Um, we can create a new tier. Yeah. The Jimbo Bazooby Jimbo level. Bazooby. A million dollars. A million dollars and we will give you a goat. Yeah, we'll get you a goat we'll if you give us a million dollars. Goat. It's an expensive goat. Yeah, no matter where you are in the world, we'll get you a goat. Yeah, yeah. we'll get a Think goat to you. That. Anywhere in the Anywhere. world. For a million dollars. Okay. For a million we, dollars. We would do that. We'd do that. I'd figure out a way. Yeah. Even if I had to deliver a goat. <laughs> That's at the Jimbo Bazooby level. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary's owner, Jimbo Bazooby. <laughs> was issued with a $440 infringement notice after Gary allegedly ate flowers outside the Museum of Contemporary Art in Sydney. Although Gary was not in trouble, he accompanied his owner to Downing Centre local court for moral support after Jimbo <laughs> appealed the fine. Gary spared no expense for the occasion, donning a colourful hat and black bow tie. In the end, so I like they're still dressing up the animals for court. <laughs> Uh, in the end, Gary and Jimbo were triumphant. Their lawyer successfully argued that the offence of destroying vegetation had to be committed by humans, not their animals. Yeah. The infringement notice was declared invalid and the overjoyed pair headed happily home. And that's the happy ending oh. to this report on animals on trial. Well wow. done, Jimbo Bazooby. Jimbo Bazooby. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't represent himself, to be honest. Yeah, Jimbo Bazooby sounds like the type of person that's going to represent themselves. Uh, I'll field this one. Yeah, thank you. No, actually, I think Gary would have been the one representing him. <laughs> he was wearing a bow tie. That's right. Very smartly dressed. A beautiful, beautiful goat. Oh, what a goat. The goat. The goat. I think Jimbo Bazooby's my goat. I agree. Um, it looks of- like um, Jimbo Bazooby might be a comedian <gasps> okay. who performs with Gary the Goat. <laughs> Oh, my God. Gary the Goat and Jimbo Bazooby were, an, were, I'm so sorry, oh. an Australian comedy duo who performed in Aussie towns becoming very popular. They began their comedy career in 2011, mostly through Facebook and YouTube, with their Facebook page having over 1.7 million likes. Wow. Yes. So, what a what a tale. What a fun story. Thank that you is for so sharing interesting. Those, what all made, those stories with us, Matt. What made you think I'm going to do Animals on Trial? That's so cool. Uh, I think it, it was- uh, used as a question on uh, one of those first stories, maybe the seven-year pig was used as a who knew it question. Oh well, yeah, uh, <coughs> months ago, I think maybe even one of our UK live episodes there, hmm. which obviously made a big impression on you. And um, you yeah. know, it's so weird. I remembered. I thought when you started talking about pigs, I thought when we were in Bristol, did one of us once do it? I thought we did a do go on about. Maybe like a witch or something yes, with pigs? Yes, I did that about something about a witch and like- She possessed a pig or something? Something like that. Yeah, I feel like it, there was something like that. Yeah. yeah, great. I reckon you're right. It was at the hen and chicken. Yeah, we were at hen-, <gasps> hen and chicken. Oh, my God. No rooster. No though. rooster. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm going to have to run, but I, I can I entrust you two with uh, the most important section of the show? Yeah, everyone's favorite section, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, great. We'll take over. But have a great laugh. <laughs> <laughs> See you never. Well, with Matt Stewart departed now, it's time for everybody's favourite section of the podcast, which I believe has a jingle that might sound a little something like this. Fact, quote, or question. Ding! She always remembers the sing and he always remembers the ding, even if they're a little unsure about it. I just sort of, I was just kind of like, is that what we're doing? But yeah. it's the only one that has a jingle. That's right. We're into our fact about a question section. Now, this whole section, this back half of the show is dedicated to our Patreon supporters. People can go at any time to patreon.com slash do go on pod or to our website, do go on pod.com. Click Patreon. And then um, if you want to support the show, keep us rocking and rolling into our ninth year, what you can basically do is sign up at different levels. You get different rewards for different amounts of money. And basically, uh, 
yeah, you keep the show going whilst getting extra stuff like being part of the Facebook group. We put up three bonus episodes a month. Now there's 200 in the back catalogue that you can get. Uh, access to live show tickets. You can also vote on topics, which is what happened with this ma- uh, Matt's topic today. We never know what you're going to pick. He thought the Patreon people would go for a serial killer, but they ended up going with this rather interesting tale about wacky stuff where humans put animals on trial. So you can you change the show, basically. And uh, yeah, anytime, go to patreon.com slash do go on pod. But the first thing we do is our fact, quote, or question section. Now, yeah. these people sign up at the Sydney Scheinberg Deluxe Package level, yep. Jess. And what does that mean? Well, it means that they get to give themselves a title. They get to give us a fact, a quote, a question, a brag, a suggestion, a joke, a compliment. Uh, a recipe. A recipe. It can be anything they want to share with us. Absolutely. We, we love it. May I read them? It's an honour. Matt well, usually does, but- I would actually love if you did it. Okay, great. I forgot that one of us had to read this. Yeah. I'm glad you've got it open yeah. there. Honestly, it's the at the time of the recording, it's the end of the year- it, it's 5.38. We're, we're checked out. This is the last we bit of the We are struggling. Year. It's been a big day. It's been a big month. Big but year? Big year, dare I say. This, But I feel 2024 is going to be a good one. Yeah. A good year? I feel it. Finally. Finally a good year. Finally. Jesus. Hopefully, I've been holding out for a good one. Hopefully when you're listening to this, you're thinking, yeah, well, it already started pretty good here, so that's good. Yeah. I uh, know these people always give themselves a, a title as yeah. well, Jess, a nickname. So the first, uh, first fact quote a questioner this week is Stephen Edmonds. Stephen has given himself the title Consumer of Too Much Trivial Information. <laughs> is that via us, Stephen, or through other methods? Well, Stephen's, you know, reliably always at live shows in Melbourne, front one of, row. One of our greatest live supporters. Love him so much. I believe much. when we first met Stephen, it was in Thailand. Really? At the Coast of Melbourne podcast. I think that's the first time I remember meeting you, Stephen. Maybe we'd seen, seen you at live shows before, oh, but that was definitely when we first saw you there. That's fun. And, uh, yeah, since then, basically... Every time we look at a live show, they are on the front it row, is. and we really appreciate it. Love you. Love you, Stephen. When you look out and see Dare people- Dare I say it? When you look Love at, you. Look out and you see people in front and you recognise, you go, this is going to be fine. Yeah, exactly it's, right. It's it's comforting. Yeah, it is really nice. So, uh, Stephen, yes, consumer of too much trivial information. Stephen's giving us a fact in brackets, maybe? <laughs> oh, okay. So, let's see. Got to fact check it? <laughs> let's find out. Um, and just like- Matt, I haven't read these until I read them, so we'll see how we go. Here we go. From time to time, I think about some tidbit of information and can't remember where I got it from or even if it's true. (laughs) This is possibly a side effect of listening to too many podcasts and watching too many YouTube videos. One such fact, in quotation marks, that comes up recently um, was that ranged weapons, i.e. cannons, guns, etc., were not honoured but instead conflicts. What? We're not honourable, but instead, conflicts should be sorted out hand-to-hand. Of course, heavy or pointy things like swords were allowed. I have no idea if this is true. A quick Google suggests maybe for the ancient Greeks. You couldn't have a gun. That's not honourable. If, okay. you if you've got a conflict, hand-to-hand or maybe a sword, at most. But the, the, the weapon has to be uh, wielded by a hand. Uh, yes, I suppose. But a gun is held by hand. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you're right. But... Uh, you- you see that often in movies and stuff. Yeah. You know, at the end, it's the, the action hero versus the, the super bad guy. Yeah, and, and they put down their guns, the guns and they just down. fucking punch exactly. each other and then, to death. Yeah, punch each other and maybe <laughs> grab- Well, then the baddie cheats and pulls out a knife yeah. and then the good guy pulls out a plank of wood. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, he's honourable. This is sick. Um, Stephen continues, specifically for Jess, a related aspect mentioned was that submarines are sneaky. <laughs> so a gentleman would have no part in that behaviour. Uh, a Google of this one suggests that the bad behaviour of German U-boats is part of what brought the USA into the First World War. They're like, U-boats are fucking sneaky. Yeah, that's right. We don't trust these submarines. Oh, I kind of get it. That is what they feel. They feel sneaky. They do feel They, they also just feel silly. They don't feel honourable. No, they feel very silly. They feel silly. And- I'm sorry if you live and work in a submarine. Yeah, I'm actually- I, There's nothing wrong with them. Would I go in a submarine? Maybe. Not too deep. But I would, but I think they're silly. I think the closest I, would, I might go like on board. If yeah, I had one yeah. of those ones that's like docked in a river somewhere, yep. you know, that's basically decommissioned. Yeah, just to see what it's like in there. But no way am I getting. I don't want to go underwater. underwater. I don't no. like that. I want to be. I want to have very easy access to oxygen at all times. And I know you can breathe inside, but I don't like being underwater. Yeah. Anyway. Unless I go snorkel on. Oh, my God. Submarines. Uh, <laughs> they got the little periscope. That's right. But that's not where they're getting their air. The snorkel, what? The snorkel gives you air at all times. Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you to Stephen. Uh, our next fact quote or question comes from Michaela McRae. 
and Michaela's given us off the title, a brigadier major in the feline servitude division. <laughs> a brigadier. Brigadier major. Feline servitude. Obviously, someone's going to look after this, this fantastic feline. Someone felines. has to, and they deserve uh, um, kindness. That's Well, they deserve to be pampered in their own minds. That's right. <laughs> Those cats. Michaela's giving us a question saying, Hi, gang, have you ever looked at the Google or equivalent street view of your home and seen your pet? I was looking at mine recently ah. to see how it had changed over time, and in the most recent image I saw my my sentient shag rug sitting in the window. She often sits there and watches the goings-on. I'll paste a link here to my address, but I ask that you don't read it out, of oh, course. Oh, okay, that's nice. Please enjoy this candid view of Her Majesty doing her best work. That's great. I love this, and thank you for sharing this. Of course we're not going to um, dox no, you. but we'll look at it. We'll and to be fair, it. I won't remember your address anyway. Okay, I'm looking. I see it. Oh, okay. I you can think see I, the rug. I think I can spot. So it's it's a tough one, Dave. I think top cor- top window on the left. Oh yeah, there's a little cat in the window. That's so fun. That is pretty fun. I've uh, I've gone back. I must say, I don't feel like. Can I zoom in? Gone oh, back I to can. Like- <laughs> you can zoom and see. Yeah, there it is. There's a little cat looking out the window. Is that cat? Is the face blurred? No, I think maybe it's slightly to the side because oh, okay. so do you remember that- the old stupid old studios? Yeah, so and because you can go back and look at old, yeah, the history. You can go through the history, which yeah. I've done with my like my parents and my family home growing up, and ah. it's funny. And I'm like, oh, there's my high school girlfriend's car. Oh wow, oh, it's so funny. Oh, there's you know my dad's car from that year, from that. From oh, that that's interesting. But it had quite a long driveway, so you can never see people or anything like yeah, that, okay. unfortunately. But you can see like the garden and stuff change over time. So that's really I love doing that. Ooh. But if you went back to the old stupid old studios, which used to be on Oven Street, yep, hanging out in the window, the Auntie Donna guys one day saw the Google. Yeah. Like car driving past and it's so funny just to see because <laughs> they're very distinct looking guys. Yeah. And they're right there. It's very fun. I'm looking at my parents' house now. Um, The bin's out. Oh, yeah. Can you go and see more at, dates? And go to the old ones. I love it. Like, it goes back to like 2007 yeah, or something. Yeah, I want to go back to like before. Nah, the oldest is January of 2008 and we already lived there. But they have um, the fence has changed colour as my parents painted it. Oh, <gasps> is that me? No Are you there? way. No way. Oh my gosh, please tell me you're there. No, by the time it I move forward that there was there's a person that's my car, I reckon. Is it? No. Um sorry, this is tedious. No, it's f- it's fun for us though. But I just there was a person walking along the street and it looked a little bit like me. Let me find it. Yeah, most recently 2021. I don't think it's changed since then. 2008. I'm going to my current house and looking at the oldest it can go is 2007, and I'm like, huh, that tree in the front yard's still alive. Yeah. But it's really big now. That's not me. Is that me? Could that be me? <laughs> that looks like you. That could almost be me. That looks, what year's that? 2009. Oh my I gosh. did live there. Did you have hair like that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Looks like I'm just going for a walk. But if I try and, like... Move on. It's it's different. The person's not there. You know when you try and sort of yeah yeah there's no yeah, person yeah yeah. There. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. That's so fun. It could be me going for a walk, or maybe not at all. Anyway, um, thank you for sharing. Uh, that's exciting. Yeah, the picture of your cat in the uh, in the window. That's very cute. And uh, I haven't. Well, I guess I have now. Um, I haven't looked up my address, but also I live in a big apartment building. And uh, I don't think my dog's going to be on the balcony at that exact moment. It could be, though. Because honestly... if he's on the balcony, it's because he's pissing. Yeah. Okay. You know? I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Here we go. This is fun for people to I know, we're really, uh... listen to us Googling. I know, I'm, getting, I'm getting carried away. God, it's fun, though. And I, I'll be able to see when they put in the new fence. <laughs> oh, yeah, the new fence is there on the... Uh... Hang on, if I... when's this? August 2023. They've done this quite recently. We are not on the balcony, but I can see the lights from the back of my TV. So I have little Govi lights on there. That's a bit of fun. That's cool. September so sometimes it's nice to see evidence that you definitely exist. Yeah, I've also forgotten there was a big tree right in front of the apartment and then they cut that down and now you can see my... Anyway, yeah, cool. Let's have a back of this go. 2007. Wow. What fun. 
This is tedious to listen to. But yeah, sorry, everyone. But nice uh, to see the trees yeah. growing in my in my yard. Do yourself a favour and have a go. That's fun. But yeah, no pets, but I appreciate you sharing with us. Yeah, that's a good one. That's really Great good. One, Great question. Um, all right. Next we have Chris Torres. Chris giving themselves the title Official North Carolinian Living in Ohio with Family near Gary, Indiana of the podcast. Oh, my gosh. I think Chris has um, had that title before. Yes, I was going to say. And I love it every time. Because last time I remember saying, you're ticking everything off there, yeah. except for Vermont, we said. That's right. Um, and Chris is giving us a brag, which we love. We love a brag. We yeah, welcome yeah, a brag. please, brag it up. It's a brag safe it place. Um, Chris saying, hi, gang, I'm writing this. Uh, I'm writing in this time with a brag, which is really uncomfortable because I'm super humble and down to earth, but I'm really excited. <laughs> it has recently become official that in the fall of next year, I'll be starting my dream job as a professor of biology. Oh, wow. That is so cool. I still can't believe I managed to convince people to pay me to think about dinosaurs all day. <gasps> I wanted to shout out to my parents, Bob and Rhoda, who listen, my partner, Christina, who listens. These are, yes. all, these are all exclamation marks. And my dumb old dog, X, who watches me listen for their support as I struggled through the often heartbreaking process of finding an academic job. One more thing before I go. In my field, a really exciting little moment we get to experience is the first time we put out a call encouraging prospective graduate students to apply to work in our labs. Usually that first announcement happens at a scientific conference, but as an American researcher, I figure why not do it in everyone's favourite section of an Australian <laughs> podcast? So if any undergraduate slash uni students out there are interested in doing a master's degree on bird evolution, especially in flamingos in California, find me on Twitter – at uh, Taurosaurus underscore Rex. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. And says, looks like my title is going to be getting a little longer. And he finishes by saying, books forever. Books forever. Oh, my God. I'm, I reckon you've had your, your books cut out over the last few yeah, years. Yeah, big time. To become a professor. That's incredible. That's fantastic, Chris. Congratulations. And a great brag. Yeah, love that. Please Love that. Because you can be humble and also, you know, celebrate your achievements. I think it's great to celebrate your achievements. I find it, um, I always find it not odd or, I don't know, like we we are great at celebrating weddings and engagements and babies. Yes. But nothing else in our lives. And yeah. there's so many other things that we do that are so great and deserve to be, you know, celebrated. Yes, you might have, you have a 21st and then what your next one's what, your 40th? Yeah, maybe. Or you do nothing like- Nothing in there. Maybe your 30th. Maybe. But yeah, it's it's you know, and there's other stuff in your life, and maybe you don't do those three things of having a baby, getting engaged, or getting married. Exactly, and your life I'm, is still worthy. It's still valid. Exactly, it's exciting. You still, you still have achievements. That's right. That's so cool. Thank you so much, Chris. Congrats, and love hopefully, it. you've also inspired people to celebrate their victories with us as well, because we yes, please, love it. Right in. We love. A, we always say it, we love, love a brag. brag. Share your good news, and it can be small stuff too. Yes. I love a small victory. Oh my god. Yeah, love it. Anyway. Finally, Patrick J. Early, giving themselves the title Chief Effective Detective Inspector of Inspecting <laughs> Defective Detectors. <laughs> well done. I did all right. Well done. Considering it's like late in the day yep. and my brain is <laughs> done. Boom. Yeah, <laughs> she's powered down. Um, Patrick, giving us a joke. Oh, this is great. Love this. Says, Please. Ghetto Legends, here's a joke I came up with recently. <gasps> An original. Patrick Love original. Love this. Okay. What do you get when a poet smokes weed and overthrows the government? Oh, okay. A poet overthrows some sort of dictator, I'm thinking, revolution. Uh-huh. Oh, um, yeah. A uh, a two-day- Coup day. Yes, a coup's in there, maybe. A high coup. A high coup. A poet smokes weed- Yes, he's high. And overthrows high. the government. A high High coup. coup. Fantastic. That is good. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good stuff. That's a good joke. Oh, my gosh. And uh, uh, finishes by saying, love you all and stay safe out there. That's which great. is so lovely. Patrick, a fantastic joke. Honestly, yes. A haiku. I'm going to say it one more time just for anybody, if you want to write it down, to share at a family dinner next time. Yeah, that's right. Claim it as your own. No, no, no. Give credit, but share it. I, I assume if Patrick's sharing it with us, he wants it to be shared with the world. That's right. What do you get when a poet smokes weed and overthrows the government? A haiku. That's fucking yes. good stuff. That is great. Um, so thank you once again to Patrick, Chris, Michaela, and Stephen for your fantastic facts, quotes, questions, brags, jokes, etc. Um, and the next thing we like to do is uh, I usually come up with a little bit of a game. Yes, based on the topic at hand, which is animals mm. on trial. Yeah. 
Um, Don't think come to mind. I think all of these people are judges. Yes. And we just have to say the animal and the crime. Okay. Is that fair? Yep. Love it. Okay, great. Um, do you want to go one for one on Let's this? Let's do it. Okay. Um, I'll kick things off. Uh, firstly, from Seattle, Washington, I would love to thank Case Lane. Ooh. Case Lane. The Honourable Judge Case Lane. <laughs> Oh, okay. The case with Case Lane. That's good. I'm going to say uh, Case Lane is judging a- Cheetah. A cheetah? Yeah. Ooh, I mean, a very guilty animal. Yeah. A cheetah who's been uh, embezzling yeah. from the casino where they work. That's right. They are usually a card dealer. Yep. You know, a poker dealer, but they've yep. been taking a little- a croupier or little whatever it is. under the table. Yeah. yeah. A croupier. I love that. I love that word. Uh, case Lane. Hopefully, uh, you know, you're a- Fair-handed judge. And we should say allegedly of the cheetah. Yeah, exactly. This subjudice is in place, yeah. you know, let's let's not influence yes. the court. But, uh, yeah, a, a, a tough case and uh, we, we trust you, Case Lane. Do you want to thank somebody? I'd love to thank from Garden Suburb, which sounds made up in New South Wales, Ashley O'Neill. Ashley O'Neill. Uh, the s- Honourable Judge Ashley O'Neill. Presiding over no, a, a mongoose yes. on trial for- Harassment. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Stalking. I'm thinking oh, okay. of Jeff the talking mongoose. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Which I guess is kind of like harassment. He's like in their walls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty tricky case, Ashley, that you've got on your hands there. We wish you well. But- Your honour. But thank you, Ashley. I would also love to thank from Dublin, in Dublin, in Ireland. Oh, my gosh. Adam French. Adam French. Adam French, what are you doing in Ireland? <laughs> Your name should be Adam that, Irish. That reminds me. I'm sure I've said this on the podcast before, but when I was in prep, which is the first grade of primary school in Victoria, yeah. there was a girl in my class called Amy French. And I remember specifically, this is one of my few memories from prep, mm. the teacher had to call a meeting to tell the class that Amy, just because her name was French, doesn't mean that she is French. So we could not understand that. Couldn't get the concept. No, 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 no. That's just the name. So I wonder if that's that ever, so happened, cute. ever happened to Adam French. We had um we had somebody in have we given a name yet? A, a case or anything yet? Oh uh, no, no, no. Okay. Well we had a, a girl in primary school who whose name was Katie, and then she kind of spoke to the class one day and was like, Hey guys, um, I don't want to be called Katie anymore. Can you please call me Catherine? Oh, okay, Which great. was her full name, but, you know, but she was like, don't call me Katie, call me Catherine. Yeah. And, of course, being the mature, what, grade twos we were or oh, something, no. we would run around the playground going, Katie, Katie, like absolute pricks. Oh, my gosh. But I gosh. think, like, she would sort of pretend to be really annoyed by it, so I think we, were, I think it was lighthearted. Okay, but you, clearly I reckon what's happened there is Katie at home has said to her mum and dad, yeah. look, I don't want to be Katie. I think I prefer Catherine. And her mum's like, that's fine. I'll just go in there and tell them that and yeah, that'll be fine. that'll be fine. Everybody will They'll respect be, that. They're mature. They're seven and eight. You could be called whatever you want to be called. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, <laughs> you double down on it. Okay, Adam, Adam French. French. I'll say an owl Ooh. on trial for. Insurance fraud. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look good either. <laughs> it's a bad look. But the Honourable Adam French. Look, Adam will give a fair trial to this. Adam. I agree. Yes, Adam has a reputation of being quite fair, <laughs> firm, but, but fair. kind. You yeah. know, like you know, yeah. So I think I think the owl's in good hands. Do you want to thank somebody? I'd like to thank from Wooddale, Illinois. It's Marta Escobedo. Oh, are you kidding me? Really, Escobedo. Is a Escobedo. F- Gotta write down some of these names. I don't know what I'll ever do with them. Like if I ever create a character or something. Don't just walk around with a list of people's names in your phone, Dave. When you die in suspicious ways, yeah. they'll look like a list of your enemies. Marta Escobedo. That's amazing. Marta Escobedo, the Honourable Judge Marta Escobedo, okay. presiding over a case uh, in which a jackal- Has stolen a BMX bike. Whoa. Yeah. And like a good one? Yeah, like a huffy. <sighs> Shit. Like a really good huffy. Oh, it doesn't look good for the jackal. Do you think the jackal's a good nickname? The Jackal's a great nickname. Yeah. Have you seen, I recently watched the Bruce Willis film, Bruce Willis Richard Gere, called The Jackal. Ah, okay. From the 90s. Seen that one? It, that it does vaguely ring a bell. It's got the scene where he, uh, he he shoots a young Jack Black's arm off. 
What? Yeah, it's quite horrifying. Okay, scene. no, I have not seen that at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but most people, that's all they remember about that scene. I know that because I looked at that scene on YouTube and all the comments are like, I've never seen this film, but I've somehow, I remember this. It scarred my childhood. And I had the same thing. Wow. I watched the clip because I was like, I don't think I remember this. And then I went back and watched the movie. It's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> Bruce Willis, it's an interesting one because he he's a an assassin and his thing is that he changes his- disguise really really well oh okay so it's pretty funny because he's like sometimes wearing a hat sometimes got like blonde hair sometimes so he's not actually changing his disguise super well he always looks like bruce willis yeah of course but he's got different hair you know what would be funnier is if it was a different actor every time yes that would be that would be funny they should have done that that's good stuff anyway thank you so much to marta escobedo i would also love to thank from spartanburg in uh south carolina wow sarah faith white Sarah Faith White. That's My a great gosh. Name. So you watched that name. Okay. Uh, Sarah Faith White is on, tr- well, presiding over a trial where a starfish has been accused oh. of committing. Um, uh, uh, of, well, actually, catfishing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Love was- to strike that from the record because and, it's, and it's like, not looking good. A lot. To be she honest, had a lot of catfishing. Yeah, 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 and like, yeah, uh, in, like t- stealing money from people, right. but also just like really breaking hearts. Yeah, because people thought they were on the chat to like a you know a beautiful blue whale. Yeah, it was but actually it's a starfish. starfish. Whoa, uh, gross. Yeah, exactly. No, they're like, not what I signed up for. That's fine. That's good for you, but I'm not into starfish. Yeah, that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. So yeah, there you go, Sarah Faith White. A tough like, case ahead. I would like to thank from a location unknown. We can only imagine deep within the Fortress of the Moles, Mm -hmm. which we discovered the origin of the Fortress of the Moles on this episode. (laughs) It's Chris Wan. Yes. Or Chris Wan. Chris Wan. There's like five N's. Five N's. W-A-N-N-N-N-N. N-N-N-N-N. Chris, the Honourable Judge Chris Wan, um, presiding over a case in which A, Flamingo, have we already done Flamingo? No, I haven't done Flamingo. Okay, has been accused of breaking into someone's fridge and stealing <gasps> all their yogurt. No. And they had a lot of yogurt. Are you kidding They'd me? They've just been to the yogurt store. <sighs> That's when I'm at my happiest. Yes. When I open my fridge and I'm like, ah, oh, full of yogurt. Full of yogurt. I have so much yogurt. So many flavors. Yeah. I made a smoothie this morning with a tropical yogurt in it. Oh, yum. Fucking delicious. That's delicious. Well, so what good. else is in it? Mango. Passion yeah. fruit, yes. milk, protein powder. Yes. So then you add the protein yogurt. That's another seven grams of protein, oh baby. Oh, my gosh. And it had, do you blend it so it's like really drinkable, a liquid yeah, type thing? Yeah, you- drinkable. Okay. Smash it down. God, you're- I'm ready. I'm powered. I'm ready to start my day. Yeah. My God, you're like kicking the door down. Well, I do anyway, but yeah. I did it with more power <laughs> Even this time. more power. Yeah, it didn't quite zap me of all yeah. my energy because I had some. Um, Thanks, th- Chris Wan. Thank you, Chris Wan. I would also love to thank from Holly Springs in North Carolina. I've had the Carolinas today. Yeah, I don't have a fun fact about that place, so you can keep reading. <laughs> I think fuck. I'd love to thank <laughs> the Honourable Judge Karen Little. Karen Little is uh, presiding over a case. This is a strange one because it's a pretty rare animal, a Komodo dragon. Yes, accused of purposefully switching up uh, patients' Uh, subscriptions for their prescriptions for their glasses. Oh my gosh, that would be so annoying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you go in to pick up your new glasses. You take took ages choosing new frames. Oh, forever. Got to find the right shape, right color, all that sort of stuff. You're excited. You go in to pick up your new specs. You put them on, and you're like, I can't see a thing. This is worse than nothing. And it turns out that's basically every person who's gone to that particular spec savers. Yeah, yeah. And, it was- and that yeah, and it's not just an accident. Like purposefully, yeah. The Komo- well, we accuse the Komodo dragon. That's of doing right. It. Yes, allegedly. But yeah. We don't know. So that's up to Karen Little to get to the bottom of that case. Thank you, Karen. And, and the and the motive why is what I'm really interested yeah, in. Like, sure. what are you what are you getting out of that? Why are you doing that? Is it just to watch the world burn? Yeah, because if so, lock them up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that kind of yeah. energy in people or animals. That's evil. Mm. I would like to thank from Kedron in Queensland. It's Anita C. Anita the Honourable C. Judge Anita C. Um, uh, overseeing a case uh, involving a hmm, dugong. A dugong. Is that a thing? Dugong. Dugong. Yeah, that's for, for basically. <laughs> potato, potato. 
Dugong. Dugong. A dugong, which has been accused of... It's difficult because that's basic, mostly a water animal. A dugong has been accused of putting holes purposefully in people's parachutes before oh, they go out. Oh, come on. And no one that's died. manslaughter. No one died, fortunately. That's attempted manslaughter. Yeah, exactly. No one died, fortunately, because the backups weren't tampered with. Yeah. But the, the main chute always had these big dugong-shaped teeth holes. Shit. And they got big old fangs on yeah. them too, don't they? Yeah, they're fanging like it up. Like tusks. Yeah. Oh, that's awful. That's attempted manslaughter. Yeah. Or attempted murder. I can never remember. Is that attempted murder? I think that's attempted murder. Because it's on, like you really planned it. Yeah, manslaughter think, is like, oopsie. Think, yeah, I don't think there is an attempted <laughs> oopsie manslaughter. Oopsie dead. <laughs> yeah, <you're laughs> you attempted right. an accidental death. Yeah. Interesting. Attempted murder. That's full on. Anita, you have got oh, your hands full with this case. Yeah, that's a sick dugong. I think that's going to be quite a long... A long hearing, yeah, you know, a long trial. Clear the schedule for that one. So all the best to you, Anita, in yep. that tricky trial. Um, and finally, finishing it up, I would love to thank from Sunderland in Great Britain, Keeley Ludford. A, the case of a toucan. Uh, committing grand theft auto, <laughs> allegedly. Okay. Grabbing the steering wheel with its bill. Oh, yeah. Like, ah, <laughs> yeah. Driving along. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. What, uh, but actually, and I, you know, I would cover our asses and say allegedly, but there is a lot of um, phone footage. Phone footage, yes. I've, I've seen a couple of dash cams as yeah, well. Yeah, it's it's pretty hard to claim you didn't do it. Yeah. You know? There was a GoPro in the car, thankfully, mm, facing, that was recording. Facing the toucan. Yeah, and the toucan was even there saying, ha ha, it's me, you know, saying their name. Yeah, and like right. Saying, I'm oh, doing no. this on purpose. It was like, oh, my God, stop talking, toucan. <laughs> still, still saying not guilty. Yeah, which is an interesting plea. But, yeah, there you go. So we would love to thank, once again, Keely, Anita, Karen, Chris, Sarah, Marta, Adam, Ashley, and Case. Thank you so much to those people. Now, we also need to check if there's any new inductees in the Triptych Club, which yeah. is our Hall of Fame. Yep. Our honour roll. Yes. Our, it's a, but it is also a club, like a, like a hangout zone. These people have been supporting the show on that shout out level or above for three consecutive years. We've already shouted them out a couple of years back, but to say thank you and to enshrine them, put them up on the wall, gold letters, all that sort of stuff, we uh, we induct them forever into the Triptych Club. Yeah. And, and Jess is always behind the bar with it. With, I mean, it could be a smoothie. Who knows what you're making? Mm. Food, drink, you're the caterer. Yeah, that's right. I've got animal crackers. Okay. Um, Good one. And uh, I, am, I have making like cocktails, I guess you could call them, but I'm using animals. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just a, like a meat cocktail. I don't eat meat, so um, I can't taste test it or anything. But I'm just blending a lot of meat, and I think I think that should be all right. And so there you go. Okay, beautiful. And I always book a band. <laughs> yep. Have you got Animal the uh, the Muppet? No. The Muppet drummer didn't write back, write back to my emails. I don't know if if he can type. I don't think he has thumbs. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he's fucking holding. But- Drumsticks. I've got, uh, you're never going to believe it. Why? Obviously. You know, we spoke about some rats on this episode. Yeah. I booked this band a long, long time in advance. What have you done? But the instrumental band Rat Attack <gasps> are here. Wow. Today. Wow. Are they going to play their big hits such as? Such as Loud. I actually do know this band. <laughs> loud Pipes. Loud Pipes. Yes, remember that song? They played at Meredith one year, the, the one year I went. Oh, fun. They were very cool because they're sort of electronic or instrumental, uh, but then also had a, like a light show going and it was like very late at night. So some people are absolutely off their dial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> About a few beers is a bit of fun. A few beers and a few yeah. other things. Yeah. <laughs> I would never. No, not you. Yeah, my God, I'm a freaking nerd. I'm talking about other people. Yeah, other people have had had, had, had all the things. <laughs> but, yeah, they were they were really, really great. But I can't believe that I booked them the night that we talked about rats. Yeah, that's crazy. What are the changes? It keeps happening. Um, and so, yeah, we like to – normally Matt is sort of the one to raise the velvet rope, tick you off the list, welcome you in. We all stand around cheering and, and welcoming you. I guess I can do that this time, Dave, and then you can sort of hype them up a little oh, bit. Oh, yes. How, how many have we got? Three. Three, okay. I think you can do that. I absolutely think. Do you feel confident? Yes. Okay, great. Well, here we go. And also, Matt's not here to bring you down with his negativity. It's just yeah, that's right. It's this just me. Pure positive vibes. I am the human equivalent of a little pat on the bum. Yes. You know, so <laughs> I've got you. Everybody finds that comforting. Yeah, Find yeah. me somebody who doesn't find a little pat on the bum exactly. comforting. There's nothing weird about it. There's nothing weird. Maybe a stranger giving you a pat, sure. But a, a loved one, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's why babies like it. It's comforting. Chill out. I'm right. getting very defensive about liking a pat on the bum. <laughs> From certain people. Anyway, so welcoming into the Triptych Club, 
this week. From Silver Springs, Maryland, it's John Brophy. I don't have a trophy case here, but I do have a John Brophy yes. case. Yes, we'll you're- put you in glass, <laughs> yeah, Charles. Sure. Put you Stay on display. There. Look pretty. Shine for us. <laughs> from London, in London, it's Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte from not London, but from Funden. Oh, she's fun. She's Charlotte. She's fun. <laughs> I'm getting a party started in it. What Ooh. in it? All right. What's up? I'm Charlotte. Let's party. <laughs> yeah, have a bit of fish and chips. We mushy peas. love you, Charlotte. Yeah, we love you we so much. We love you. And finally, from South Borough, South Borough in uh, Massachusetts, it's Paloma Velasquez. I was in a coma, and the first person I saw when I awoke was Paloma Woo! Velasquez. Ooh, you're a very comforting presence. Exactly. You made Dave feel safe again as he came out of the coma. You're whispering sweet nothings in my ear and I said, oh, my gosh, I'm awake. Hello. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. And now you're here. Would you like to be inducted into the Tribute Club? And Paloma said, I mean, if you've got time, because that's just the cool person Paloma yes. is. So thank you and welcome, Paloma, Charlotte, and John. Welcome to the Tribute Club. Now that you're in it, you can never leave. But why would you want to? We haven't actually had anyone request to leave, but there is a rule that you can't. You can't. But no one's requested it even. Yeah, I don't know what we would do if we did get a request. Yeah. How do, how do you think? Maybe you'd have to take it to a panel. Yeah. And we could sort of decide. You'd have to have a good reason it's to leave. It's a no leave. from me. Yeah, obviously it's a no from me as well, but maybe Matt could be swept. Nah, but we've already said no. Um, yeah, two to one. This is democracy. I don't know why you'd wanted like a demotion in life. Exactly. Go back to the, the real world with all those suckers. Yuck. But yeah, I guess that brings us to the end of the episode. Um, just one thing I would like to say to people: a couple of things actually. Remember to wash your butt. Okay, good step. Um, good, good thing to do. Thank you at yes, all times. It is just wash your butt. How often? Once a year? Um, I don't. You can probably overdo it. Really? Okay, too clean. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it gets red raw. <laughs> I'm scrubbing it. <laughs> um, and if you would like to suggest a topic, anybody can. You don't have to be a Patreon. It doesn't cost you any money or anything to suggest a topic. So if there's something that you think would make for a good Do Go On report. Yeah, I love when people do that. There's a link in our show notes. It's also on our website, which is dogoonpod.com, which is also where you can find information about live shows, our other podcasts, all sorts of fun stuff. So head over there. You can find us on social media at Do Go On Pod as well and Do Go On Podcast on TikTok, where we are going viral, We baby. are huge on there. Oh, my gosh. We're massive. We might be one of the top three creators. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're getting to the top three. Yeah, it's pretty big for us. <laughs> anyway, um, Dave, boot this baby home. We'll be back next week with another fantastic episode. I'm sure of it. But until then, I'll say thank you so much for listening. And until then, goodbye. Bye. Ladies. That was a pretty good man. Yeah, that's your best yet. Ladies, I'm a big dumb idiot. <laughs>